is going on, everybody? Jeremy here uh, from The Quartering, here to uh, discuss some uh, flat earth stuff. Uh, I accidentally, uh, <laughs> I, I accidentally ended. I accidentally ended the other stream, so hopefully they'll come in. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Dave uh, and Austin, come on in to. Uh, I sent a new link to you guys. Um, hold on a second. They should be. I'm sure they'll figure it out momentarily. So, I will now debate myself. Um, no, no, they'll, they'll, uh, there we go. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, all right. So, uh, Dave has found his way back. I sent uh, the link. I assume he saw it too. I accidentally ended the stream earlier. So, we're going to talk a little flat earth today, a topic that uh, I knew nothing about until today. Uh, and now I know more than I ever wanted to know about it. Uh, I will let people know that, you know, I don't have strong opinions about it. Um, it's interesting to me. I have my, I'm, uh, I have my, uh, oh, there we go. There's Austin. Sorry, but sorry, guys. Uh, so I'm just going to, so the way we're going to do this is both gentlemen uh, have asked so they can have like kind of seven minute run uninterrupted where they can talk. Um, which I'm going to allow, uh, I guess we'll start with Dave since he was the first one in here. And then Austin, uh, seven minutes, seven minutes, then I'll, uh, I'll come back in and we'll kind of free form it. I've got a big list of topics that I sent to both guys. seems like both of them have addressed these things many times, but the purpose of this, uh, for me is to be, uh, I'm sure for these two gentlemen, perhaps different than me, but my biggest goal is to be, for it to be entertaining and, 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 um, to be, uh, educational and fun and uh i'm sure these guys will be very nice and, and polite and well-mannered because they just look like two very kind gentlemen uh so i'm gonna bring them in and then uh we'll start with uh first dave uh you may know him as professor dave explains he's linked all of his channels are linked he's on youtube he should also be on rumble because you know reasons um dave welcome how are you today good how are you doing thanks for having me uh, yeah i'm doing well thanks for being here and then we've got Austin. Um, you might know him as Witsit uh, on on Twitter. He's got a YouTube channel. I, I assume, I don't know, you, you should have a Rumble channel too, but his YouTube their YouTube channels are both linked in the description below. I recommend you hear them both out. And, uh, and, um, and uh, I guess we're, we're going to talk about Flat Earth. And uh, we're, we're going to start the clock at... Uh, the seven minute mark for Dave, if you're ready. Um, sure. Yeah. Just uh, yeah. present here. How do uh, that on the bottom? Oh, share screen, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. If I can, I can actually drop out too. If there's, if, if we need more room on the screen, you know, yep. There's that. Can we no, see I the slides? Yep, you got I it all. Can, yep. Okay. Okay. So ready? I'm going to shut up. I mean, I'll, I'll keep it to, so I got four thirty seven now on my clock. So at, cool. Uh, well, just flip to 438, so go ahead. Okay. So we're here to talk about flat earth versus globe earth. Austin is going to pretend to defend the flat earth. He will do so with two tactics, which I will undermine right now. First, he will pretend that the default position is that it's just totally flat. Just observe and see how flat it is. So the uh, burden of proof is on the globies to prove it is a globe. Uh, no, that's false. All of observations uh, since antiquity uh, have uh, only make sense on a spherical earth. Looking at the sun, moon, stars only makes sense on a sphere. That's how we've known the Earth is a sphere for 2,500 years. Furthermore, uh, if you deny a globe, most things don't make any sense. Day, night, seasons, weather, tides, Coriolis, geological phenomena like volcanoes, earthquakes, technology, communications, simple things like line of sight increasing with altitude, terrestrial motion, gravity, 
None of it makes sense if you deny that the Earth is a globe. Speaking of gravity in particular, I know that Austin will be very eager to talk about his electric gravity bullshit. Here are some reasons why that is stupid. He cannot derive 9.81 meters per second squared. He cannot explain why this value is based on Earth's mass. He cannot explain why G varies precisely with Earth's radius and your altitude. Despite electromagnetism being both attractive and repulsive, he cannot make anything significantly massive fall up and no, his little middle school science project with a piece of styrofoam doesn't count. He cannot explain why no discrepancy in, there's no discrepancy in the motion of objects with differing properties, paramagnetic, diamagnetic, ferromagnetic. Cannot explain why there's no difference in activity over differing substances of different conductivities, grass, sand, water, concrete. He cannot explain why things fall at the same rate regardless of elevation. His electrostatic field dissipates with elevation until it disappears yet things still fall. So Austin, this is the default position. This is the position that correlates with all observations and every nook and cranny of our knowledge about the physical world. If you would like to make a case for the contrary, feel free to do so and make sure to bring quantitative predictions. The second tactic he will use is because he knows the flat earth is so unbelievably indefensible, he will try to obfuscate by turning it into a discussion of geocentrism versus heliocentrism. He does this because he relies on using word salad about uh, esoteric topics in modern physics, like relativity and certain experiments from the 19th and 20th centuries. Unfortunately, though, for him, geocentrism utilizes a spherical earth. That's right, the Ptolemaic geocentric model that was used from antiquity until Copernicus uses a spherical Earth. So if he would like to change the topic of the debate completely from flat Earth versus round Earth to geocentrism versus heliocentrism, I'm willing to entertain that if he first admits that the Earth is a sphere and he has to mean it. If he is unable to make that concession, I will continually drag him back to very simple naked eye observations and basic logic that prove the Earth is a sphere without any understanding of physics whatsoever. Number one, the observations of the stars. In the Northern Hemisphere, the stars rotate counterclockwise. In the Southern Hemisphere, they rotate clockwise. This makes absolutely no sense on the pizza land. Why would the sky be rotating in opposite directions just depending on where you're standing? Also, why can't we all see the same stars? If you have a line of sight to a star, you should be able to see it. Uh, both of these make perfect sense on a rotating sphere. You have two celestial poles and the, and the Earth is rotating and then we can't see through the Earth. That's why you can't see certain stars. So uh, in the North can't see Southern Cross, in the South can't see Polaris. Speaking of the Southern Cross, uh, in order to get the pizza land, he has to take the point that is the South Pole and unwrap it to get the perimeter of the pizza. And that results in total absurdities like these three people all looking at the Southern Cross at the same time, despite looking at completely in completely different directions. That makes no sense at all. Again, on a sphere makes perfect sense where South actually means something and they're all looking at the South Pole. Number two, day and night and regions of illumination. This is very bad for the Flurfies because in the winter months, they need to take the sun all the way out to the periphery of the disk, and that would result in most of the pizza being dark everywhere most of the time. Of course, in reality, the opposite is true. The edge of Antarctica in these winter months is illuminated almost all the time. So how does the light get all the way over there? And then you don't even have to go all the way to Antarctica. You can go to Ushuaia, which is at the tip of South America, where people live. And that must be illuminated around 70% of the trajectory, while places like Point Barrow, Alaska experience 24-hour night. In order to try to explain this, they have to make light do things that it doesn't do. And in fact, flat earthers do not ever try to explain this at all. Uh, it gets even worse if you go all the way to the South Pole. There is a 24-hour sun there, which completely obliterates the flat Earth, as flat Earthers themselves admit. And that is why a rich person lately has been offering fully paid trips to the South Pole so that flat Earthers can see the 24-hour sun, and they are all busy crapping their pants trying to make excuses to not go. Uh, once again, on a globe Earth, this makes perfect sense. Day is when you're facing the sun. Night is when you're facing away. Pretty simple. Number three, Southern Hemisphere causes trouble. For years, flat earthers have been pretending that there are no direct uh, flights in the Southern Hemisphere. This is wrong. There are many. Sydney to Santiago is one of them. And this goes both ways, nonstop, uh, uh, in both directions over the Pacific Ocean. And then we have the Antarctica Cup Ocean Race, which is a boat race that uh, circumnavigates Antarctica. They go all the way around every year. And neither of these things make an ounce of sense on a flat earth. You would have to have 
uh, for the flight, the Sydney to Santiago takes this incredibly uh, enormous arced path instead of going the straight line path, and neither of which could be done in 12 hours anyway. And then the boat race would have to go around the entire world, always pointing, always steering away from Antarctica instead of towards it, which it doesn't do. So all of these observations are very extremely basic, intuitive ways to prove that the Earth isn't flat. OK, uh, they, these all obliterate the flat Earth. They prove without a doubt that the Earth is a sphere. Every single one of them does does this. Austin is unable to discuss any of these topics. He has no ability to explain any of these observations uh, on a flat Earth. And so he will desperately try to pivot and turn this into a debate about geocentrism versus heliocentrism. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the topic of the debate. If he wants to have that debate, that's totally fine. He must simply concede this debate that we're having now, admit that the Earth is a sphere, and then we can talk about that completely separate other topic about whether the spherical Earth moves or not. Uh, all yours, Austin. Perfect. Hey, let me, uh, um, <clears throat> perhaps I should have defined, Austin, I'll give you an extra 60 seconds, if that's okay with you, Dave, to define what flat Earth even is or just because not everybody in my audience knows. Okay. I mean, I'll, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. You think uh, so? Should we just go right to the seven? That, that the earth is flat. That's Yeah, kind of okay. The, just so everyone knows, but also that the earth is at the center of the universe too, right? Is that one well, of are those two things combined? I mean, yeah, there is no universe if there's... <laughs> right, okay. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Whatever okay, well, no, that's fine. We'll just go right to the... Right to the... Uh, Dave's... Uh, or, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Well, wait, what happened? He just left. He left? <laughs> well, he might have just, maybe he'll come back. He might have clicked a button that, uh, uh oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe he accidentally closed the window. He might have closed the window. Yeah. He might have been trying to add something. He He's probably back. tried to switch tabs to go to a, yeah. All right. There he is. Something. All right. I'll, uh, there you go. There you go. Um, uh, no, no, you're good. Um, I was like, debate over. What? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I'll shut up. And then, uh, the, so at, uh, 446, you have your seven. Cool. Um, yeah, I didn't really make a PowerPoint, but I'll just use the, the classic one here if you can pop it up on screen for me. Um, so yeah, it's our position is that the Earth is a geocentric stationary plane. Uh, this feeble attempt to, to separate the conversations is disingenuous. If the Earth is stationary, it's in the center of the universe. None of the kinematics or dynamics even of geocentrism is exclusive to sphericity. That is just a get out of jail card because he will not be able to defend the claim that we're moving around the sun to very quickly go through some of this. Um, falsification is independent of replacement. And so what always happens is people don't defend the globe. They just want to ask millions of questions to the flat earthers. And somehow if the flat earther doesn't know the answer, then all of a sudden the globe model becomes true. And then of course the burden of proof is the one making the positive claim. And then shifting the burden is making the other person prove why your claim isn't true. So if I read a book and say all these fairy tales exist, I, I don't have to prove that unicorns don't exist. Very simple concept that gets overlooked consistently in this debate. Oftentimes we get what's called a straw man fallacy. People say that this is what flat earth is and they point and laugh and no one that I know thinks that it's a flat disc in a solar system. That's ridiculous. Uh, hopefully we can prevent these, but these are the typical fallacies used. Of course, a straw man fallacy, which we just discussed ad hom attacking the person instead of the argument credentials. Oh, you're not qualified to talk about this appeal to how, what everyone else thinks appeal to authority, poisoning the well, begging the question, shifting the burden of proof. These are always used. Everyone was taught the earth's a globe when they were young. That doesn't mean it's true. Um, so let's just quickly go through the basic claims here. Claim one is that the Earth's a sphere with a radius of 3,959 miles. The second claim is that the Earth is spinning, tilted, wobbling, revolving around the sun, shooting through the galaxy that's then shooting through space. That is a positive claim. And then the third one is that the Earth is in the vacuum of space. The heliocentric model has the burden of proof for these claims. So attempting to remove the burden and, and pretend that it's just automatically granted to you at the beginning is not how logic works whatsoever. And then one would say, wait, isn't saying the earth is flat a positive claim? It is, of course. And so then we would have the burden of proof and we have fulfilled that, right? Um, actually, this right here is a specular reflection. Any convexity or concavity of the water, if it was curving, you wouldn't be able to get a specular reflection because it calls what's, uh, uh, will cause what's called a diffused reflection. Um, if we move on here, 
We have actually verified the Earth's flat in many ways. Radio waves can be sent over 10,000 miles. Amateur records show that they're sent thousands of miles um, at all frequencies, far beyond the geometric limitation of the globe. Um, here we have a distant mountains observed from 167 miles away at less than 1,000 feet. So the target hidden height should be almost or over 11,000 feet, but the mountain's only 12,000 feet. We should only be seeing roughly 1,000 feet of the mountain. Clearly, that's not the case. Here we have another one, 168 miles. Target hidden height is almost 12,000 feet, and the elevation is entirely 12,000 feet. So we should not see the entire mountain. This is a major problem because you're going to have a problem trying to invoke refraction here, and hopefully you do. Um, this is this used to be the world record um, longest distance line of sight. Of course, that means you're a direct line of sight to what you're observing. Uh, the world record for the longest photo. Here we have a target hidden height of 16,000 feet in the top of the tallest mountain is 12,000 feet, which means that the mountain should have been thousands of feet below the curvature. Here's another one, 271 miles. Again, the entire mountain should have been obstructed by over 3,000 extra feet. Here's another one, 250 miles. You get the idea over and over the, uh, the mountain should be obstructed except for just roughly uh, 800 feet here. Here's another one, 241 miles, the entire mountain, almost the entire mountain should be hidden. Um, and then it goes on and on and on. Here is an, a very important observation that everyone ducks away from. If you look in the top left here, you see you can't see the mountains. These are called Kanagu Mountains. You cannot see the mountains. So when people say, can you see, well, you'd be able to see forever if the earth was flat. That's a ridiculous draw, man. Even within a globe paradigm, you'd have to admit you can't see forever because of something called attenuation. The light gets absorbed into the medium. We cannot see the mountains until the sun gets behind it due to the intensity of the, the light from the sun. You now get a silhouette and we can see the Kanagu Mountains. These should have been completely obstructed. You can buy a plane ticket right now for two specific days of the year, and you'll know that you'll see the mountains because of a silhouette based on where the sun sets. So I guess refraction is just colluding with the calendar and with the atmosphere to make the earth look flat over and over. Of course, as a silhouette, refraction affects light, not the absence of light. Here to address his straw man about the geocentrism thing, these are projected onto a plane. These are literally azimuthal projections. So to say that it, it requires sphericity is ridiculous. Here we see that all the paths of the planets fit right within a feral cell magnet torus field. Okay, what a coincidence. And to address this uh, misnomer that the sunsets are impossible on a flat earth and they just go behind the curve of the earth. That is also not true. Here we see the sun disappearing above the horizon with a horizontal line blocking the bottom of it far above the horizon. This is proof that the sun can disappear up above the horizon uh, due to atmospheric conditions. Of course, we have tons of assumptions when it comes to the military that the Earth is flat. Specular reflection, again, I'm going to kind of speed through these, but specular reflection, you see that just a small concavity or convexity in the water actually causes what's called a diffused reflection. You'll see here in the left. So you actually need a flat surface to have a specular reflection. We see these over long, long distances uh, consistently. Um, so we'll we'll just skip over here. So and then he, of course, the globe claims that the horizon is a physical, tangible surface, and uh, it is not. It's literally a horizon that is apparent. That's why it is where one, the sky appears minute. to meet the ground. So here we can get into some of the specifics here. But of course, also on a globe, the horizon should drop down and away from you as you increase altitude. What we see in reality is it rises with us, which is a major problem. Um, so. Long story short, the entire globe model depends on the accuracy of the claimed radius value. And if that radius value is wrong, the entire model is wrong. So uh, in closing, what I'm going to say is, again, falsification is independent of replacement. The literal default position is that the Earth is a stationary plane. The globe says, well, yeah, but it's so big, it looks flat. And it's so big that based on the angular rate of motion, you can't tell that it's moving. Could that be true in theory? Sure. But that is a concession that the default position based on empirical evidence and observation is that the Earth is a stationary topograph plane, hence why we utilize it as such for all military technology, etc. Therefore, to make a claim that everything is antithetical to that, you objectively and logically have the burden of proof. Um, so, and then we'll get into a lot of the things that he mischaracterized my arguments regarding uh, throughout the debate, hopefully, but yep, there you go. Okay. Thank you for, for the opener. Uh, I want to give you both. Um, what do you think? Like, uh, I assume there's one or two things that both of you have said or that strongly disagree with, you know, other do you want me to open it up to just give you both a, a five minute period for rebuttal? Um, no, I or think you we just want to leave it open. We can dig into it. Okay. Um, why don't uh, what, what what was the first particular topic maybe that David you want to you want to 
poke around. Well, you know, Austin is denying this idea. He's he's insisting that the default position is the flat plane, empirically observably everything observable. Okay, so explain the observations from antiquity that I told you. What what? How are you getting the the sky to rotate in opposite directions depending on where you're standing? Let's start with there. How observable is that? How does that fit? Yeah, with this, is, this is what always happens. Instead of providing evidence that the surface is curving, you're saying, well, but if it's no, no, not, no, then no, no, how no. does this happen? <laughs> no curved surface. You said the default position, That's, flat plane. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you on yeah. your flat plane. Explain the observations of the, of the celestial sphere. In the north, you get counterclockwise rotation. In the south, mm -hmm. you get clockwise rotation. Explain that to me on your on your default flat plane. Explain it. Yeah, so the counterclockwise and clockwise direction is super simple. It's based on looking different directions. Your better question is why does it go around a singular point is no, what you're trying to say. No, no, no. I'm yeah. asking about the direction. I'm asking about the direction. It's just looking opposite versus... directions and make them go the opposite directions. What they all that, go east to west. That? If you put yeah, a clock literally. on your ceiling, if you put a clock on your ceiling, which way can you face to make the hands go counterclockwise? Tell me yeah, which not way. An, you can face. Not analogous. The stars you drop. Know, it, is, and, and it is though because the hands the stars, on the clock. The hands on a clock. You don't get it. Right? You don't the get it. The stars drop due to perspective, so we're actually looking out towards them, not directly up. Well, depends you know that? on your latitude, right? Depends on your latitude. If you're so at the you equator, agree? if you're at the equator, they're going from horizon to horizon. Wait, do you, you agree that if I'm looking, if I was looking out and something was spinning one way and then I looked at it from the other direction, it looked like it was spinning the opposite no, way? It yes wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. Okay, That's why so. I said, you just said, if I put a clock on the ceiling, right, which way, I'm asking you, which way can, you just said, if something is spinning one way and you look a different way, it'll spin another way. So I'm asking yeah. you, put a clock on the ceiling, which way can you face that'll make the hands appear to go counterclockwise? You which obviously way? don't comprehend what I'm saying, Dave, I think you don't understand being, what I'm saying. Do you agree that things understand. Understand. that things will appear to drop due to perspective why are you talking about perspective i'm talking because about you don't understand it so no, you're if, trying to obfuscate trying no to i'm not if the stars yeah. are above me, Let me help on you. a plane Let and i look out. out they're gonna look like they're dropping down which look means i'm this, looking buddy. out at you don't even understand basic stuff dude. look at this hang on where's the camera which way is this turning <laughs> which way is this going buddy which way is this going i don't know which do way mean? is it going yeah which way is it turning uh, who cares? Wh what who what cares? is the? Why are you obfuscating away from what I'm saying? No, I'm talking about exactly what I'm talking about. Is this going clockwise or counterclockwise? Come on, just give me the answer, buddy. You to, can see it. To you be fair, the it. the webcam is mirrored, so it might be. Oh, it, no, it is. Be, I think so. So it, I don't, well, I don't I, know, and I don't see it. What's no, the I see, it, I see it going counterclockwise. I see it going counterclockwise. Yeah, yeah that's how it. That's going Let, counterclockwise, right? Just say it, Austin. Just say it. It looks like that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we keep it turning. Do you think I don't under understand the concept? Which, no, I'm showing you and I'm showing all the viewers. Look, which way is this going now? We all get the concept. It's going brother. clockwise. So if you're standing yeah. up here and you look at the sky, you see it rotating counterclockwise. If you're down here, you see it rotating clockwise. So admit that this phenomenon makes perfect sense on a globe and on a flat earth it doesn't, which is why you're rambling about perspective and all these other things. No, to try to I, there was no rambling. You incessantly thing. interrupted me explaining it because you know you can't no, actually you're allow trying me to, to say. change the subject. Okay, let me ask I'm you. not. Let me yeah. let me try this. If this is okay. Can we start with let me because you guys are both super familiar with this. Let me let me toss out uh let me like so people can dip a toe. One of the biggest um, conversations that goes back and forth. Both of you talked about this in your videos is in a flat earth. Dave's video points out that there are some issues where, for example, the sun is coming around, right? And, and we know because we live here that one area of the world is in perpetual light. The others in perpetual dark. This would be uh, non-congruent with a flat earth. So uh, what, what is the flat earth position? Uh, am I describing that fairly, Dave? I'm, I'm over. Uh, sure. The flat earth cannot explain the region. That was my second point that it cannot explain the region. I was trying to remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what the is regions the, of what? the regions of illumination, the parts of the earth that yeah. are day or night at any given time. You yeah. But I know, you know, the answer. So I've yeah, heard the, the answer given to you. 
The viewers no, but Dave know. knows the answer. So, so something the called answer is that if you're facing the sun, it's day, and if you're not, <sighs> it's night. That's the answer. Dude, Dave, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enlighten you, bro. If you don't allow the Thank other you. person's point to be made, you didn't win anything. No, no matter how much coping is go going on We're in the chat. For you to make a point. Go okay, ahead. Okay, it's called a coffee cup caustic. It's a literal physical effect that can be replicated. The light will actually bend around the rim of any type of containment. It can literally be demonstrated and shown to perfectly replicate the seasons. The perfect light distribution on a plane earth you're objectively yeah, wrong you've had this presented to you and now you're back here in front who's, of people pretending you don't know what it is who, who has presented this to me dave if weiss did i watched it no weiss floundered like a buffoon that's why you guys all call him no. controlled opposition now if you could demonstrate no. this you'd all have videos demonstrating coffee this. there are literally the hundreds of them no, 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 no. I'm not caustic. talking about, oh, shine it and, ooh, it kind of does a thing, sort of. I'm talking about show the precise regions of day and night over several month period, right? Have it exactly precisely aligned with where it's it is. It's literally been night. done multiple times, okay, okay. Dave. So Sounds what like is it going to claim to me because I've never oh, seen it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you have. So, okay, hold on. So, so um, Austin, give him a second to explain his side. So, you're saying, so the, so the, so the, what most people see is that, you know, the daylight is predictable uh, and daylight night light is predictable based on uh, what is believed that the, you know, the, the, the orbit, the current belief about the earth's orbit in the a rotation. flat earth. Yeah. The rotation. Yeah. In the flat earth, just let him finish. Um, Dave, give, you get, you get two minutes. Can you describe? Oh, me? What? No, no, sorry. Um, I'm going to shoot it back to you for two minutes, but oh, give, sure. Austin, uh, two minutes to describe what he's talking because you, you, I just want you guys to remember like the audience doesn't know what coffee cup, co whatever, whatever it sure. is, right? right? So remember, it okay, okay, but remember, you're talking to like normies, sure, sure, okay, so, so, so that's what I'm asking. So, Austin, you have two minutes, describe. Okay. We've talked about how the sunlight stuff goes on, so two minutes, and then Dave, you get two minutes, okay. So if you type in coffee cup caustic, which I will literally look, I'll share the screen. And Dave has been shown this in no, his debate. Standpoint though, standpoint. Oh, okay. I yeah, am. Yeah. I am. Answer my the, question. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Just Google coffee cup caustic. If I have a coffee cup, if I took the lid off of my coffee cup and then I and then light was shining in from the window, what will happen because of the rim is the light will hit inside the coffee cup and wrap around the entire rim. I can take this little flat earth model right here and do it live. I'd have to cut all the lights off. And since the windows are open, I can't. So it's very simple to explain it. There you go. It wraps around. Now, if you apply this to a flat earth, you will be able to perfectly replicate the distribution of light that gives us day and night, depending on the proximity of the source of light. It's easily done. Everyone knows that and you can look it up. If you're new to that, I that's fine, but just look it up, right? How and this, and and the and, and the way that we determine sunset time is with the equation of time, which uses the apparent sun. It uses the mean of the apparent sun. So we don't even use the globe model and a physical location of the sun to determine sunset time or day and night distribution. In the real world, we use the equation of time. So you can replicate this on a flat earth. It goes in the globe earth and flat earth basket. It isn't exclusive to either one. Now, how does this, and I'm, I'm going to kick it over to Dave after this question, but one of I, I watched his debunk video, which is a little bit older, but it has a zillion views, so congrats on that. But the there there's like, let's say you have this coffee cup caustic, right? And, and yeah. his claim is is that there's like perpetual night uh, daylight in this spot and perpetual night in this spot, right? Is Dave, is, am I representing that accurately? Yes, yeah, so near the solstices, there are places with 24 hour night and 24 yeah. hour day. So how, okay. does, how does that figure into this? Yeah, look, okay, I'll share the screen so everyone can see it. Okay. Does I'll, that work? Share, we'll yeah. just do that. So, yeah. so I don't, I gotta find which one it is. Here we go, okay. I got you. Okay. If you see here, this is this is a demonstration of the coffee cup caustic. Okay? That's what this is. So if you look, you put a dome over at the top of the flat earth, you're going to take a light source. It's going to give you, you see the distribution of the equinoxes and the solstice right there below it. Now watch what the light does. Oh, oh, now, now look at it wrap all the way around the outside. Okay? This is called coffee cup caustic, meaning if there was a container on the earth, it would literally have to do this. It would have to do this. And yes, all the mathematics has been shown, and I could pull that up if I need to. Well, so the math has been give, shown. I want to give, while you pull that up, I'm going to give Dave three minutes to respond because I we, we went over. So I want to give Dave, I'm like, 
you know, I'm kind of keeping it rough, but you know, just to try to keep some someone. So I want to let Dave respond. To yeah, this. I don't need three minutes. It doesn't. It doesn't perfectly match. It's just a very hackneyed demonstration that kind of sort of makes a shape. It, they're not showing any kind of actual model that that directly correlates with all the positions. So number one, it absolutely does not correlate with the times of day and night doesn't do it. But second of all, it also creates gigantic problems because in order to get this, you're pretending that there's this dome, magical dome or whatever the hell you're talking about that's giving this effect, which number one, isn't there. Right. You cannot demonstrate that this dome is there. But number two, it creates other problems, because if you're saying that the sun is outside of this dome, then you don't get to have the sun inside the dome for the magical explanation for tides and all these other things that don't make sense on a flat earth that you're pretending that the sun and the moon do. Right. Yeah. Now, when yeah. when uh, Dave mentions this, this is another point of contention. I just, you know, you guys are going at it, but I just want to keep everyone else in the in the loop. There is uh, one of the point of points of contention is whether or not in the flat Earth model, and you guys, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, is whether or not the sun is inside or outside of this hypothetical dome. Because in one case, it's responsible for the tides and this, that, and the other, and then the other case, it's responsible. What is it? Tides and um, what did you storms? Say? Everything, yeah. Right? Coriolis. So what is the storms rotate in opposite directions depending on the hemisphere? Everything. Oh my gosh. So, okay. Oh all right. Gosh. So, um, Austin, you know, I'll give you, go ahead and respond to that. Okay. Yeah. So there, we don't know what's above us because you can't freely just shoot stuff up as high as you want to. Okay. And GPS cuts off over a certain height. It's all militarized, but there could be layers to it. I don't know if you've ever thought of that Dave. but there could just be layers. There could be multiple layers. And yeah, we know the sun affects things here. Tides don't work. You just gish gobs. Tides don't even work in your model. You can look up a paper by a Harvard, a Harvard paper, a century of tidal work. theory okay. failures. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's very simple. But this was, if the whole debate is just, Hey, let's just start spamming Austin with questions of how would this work on a flat earth? That's not a debate. You're supposed to support the claim. The earth's a spinning ball. I showed direct falsification okay. of it in my PowerPoint. So avoiding that is, like, is, is totally disingenuous. Like rotation of the night sky, depending on latitude. And okay. you can't answer. You just say the word perspective and run away. So Dave, no, I got three words out and you interrupted it. No, yeah. no, no. Okay. You were okay. free so, to answer. That's all you could do. Let me you, hold, you, remember we did the whole thing with the clock on the ceiling and you have no idea what you're talking about. You well, said that, do, fellas, okay, let me do, mind, let me back. do, let me do, uh, okay, let's, I'll play ball. I think that's fair. Um, why don't I give Dave and Austin both blocks of time, Dave, defend your position. I'll give you f f five minutes enough. You think? No, no, we I don't need to, I mean, uh, longer chunks of time are just, time for for word salads right we need to actually all right defend that the earth is a globe and then when you're done i'll pass it to austin and let him yeah. define that well i mean right? look that's I'm what you're asking for austin right so i'm gonna do that. i want him to rebut the specific falsification of the globe where we see things from hundreds of miles away that should be obstructed by literal miles of vertical yeah. curvature okay, including one silhouettes pick, pick you know, one thing pick Those one thing like that okay so that go. is the question okay the Dave, question is fine. why do we see too far and the answer is we don't Sorry, they're all lies. Every time you do a picture like that, you're lying about the distance, you're lying about the elevation, right? The the altitude from which the picture is taken. You're just lying, right? All of what these is things. The, what is the picture evil? you're talking about? Is this a picture where it's like, oh, here's a mountain that's they really just take pictures and like look at this thing that's so far away we shouldn't be able to see it, or like here's the Chicago skyline from across the lake where we shouldn't be able to see it. They're just always lying. They're just lying about the distance, they're lying about various Bro, th those were all everyone I showed was from a professional photography website that has nothing to do with flat earth with oh. all of the information listed Austin, your you model me, doesn't claim one? that the distances are wrong that isn't your one? model's answer no Austin, you guys just one? lie you guys just lie that's all it is you just lie about how far away things are and how high it's a professional is. photography website it has nothing okay. to do with flat earth well can you I share, don't... Can you share one so, I... we have, so people can see what you guys are talking about please yeah, show sure. sure anyone you want as long as dave agrees that it looks good Share one that you think, um, Austin, that you think I'm trying to, you know, um, share one that you think um, supports your position. And then Dave can debunk the, the photo or he can share his criticisms of the photo. And while he's looking that up, I want to give everyone a chance, to let you know. Um, I'm joined here by uh, two creators, two commentators, um, both um, uh, Wits It Gets It Done on YouTube. Linked in the description is at YouTube at Witsit, and as well as Professor Dave, 
Um, also enjoyed your Terrence Howard video because I, <laughs> I think he actually is legitimately insane, but that I don't know. But oh, the um, expected virality on that one, yeah, 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 that was all right, yeah. But um, both guys create content. Um, one of one of the people in this room are banned from Twitter. I don't want to name names, but the um, otherwise you can find them on Twitter or um, Davis or somewhere somewhere else where you want people to look for your stuff. Other than nah. YouTube. okay, YouTube. I One of these guys in the room is also propped up by all the algorithms. All right. Yeah, all right. right. I make popular content, man. I make popular content because it's funny. Wait, wait. You were prioritized by the algorithm. No, it's I'm priori the things that people like to watch are no. prioritized by the algorithm. If I Google nobody Wits, it gets it, you, you guys, come up. So few people are stupid enough to fall for a flat earth, so nobody watches you guys. I well, Dave, listen, that's interesting. If I YouTube Wits, it gets it geocentrism a literal stream I did, you pop up. Can you okay. explain to me why you're popping up when I search for me? Okay, let's not play let's games. Try it. Let's it's, try it. I'm yeah, it's right a, YouTube admitted in Congress they deprioritize flatter content because it's misinformation. So what, what? Uh, yeah, I don't get it. I got, if the earth is flat, what's under it? Shorts. Yeah, that's what I got. From Earth's perspective. Of course, because it's heavily censored. It doesn't mean it's true, but we don't have to play this game that like I you're not propped up. Jeff video. recommends popular content, but I make very good informative educational content. Look at well that. What do you, wait, go down, go down, go down. What do you have to do with okay. wits and gets a geocentrism? What does, the, what does your video have to do with it? You just proved my point live for the whole entire audience. Maybe I Thank put you. the keyword geocentrism in there. I don't even remember what my keywords are. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You don't know what you don't know what my keywords are. I know for a fact you did it. So anyway, you don't anyway, have access to my to YouTube because I've tested I've tested are. this because you're the number one propped up anti flat Earth. It does it it dude. They admitted in Congress that they consider it misinformation, so they deprioritize it and they prioritize the information correcting the misinformation. So that would be you, according to them. So they prioritize you. If you look up anything flat Earth related, you get Professor Dave. Okay. okay, we all know that that content blows the rest of your content out. That's why you got so many tens of millions yeah, of views. Just the, just the, uh, no, t look, you, I have 1,500 tutorials. Do we really want to talk about my education? No, bro, I'm not even, really I, I, I hope you, I hope, I like, good luck, brother. I don't, I'm not hating on you or your success. I'm just mm, pointing out. No, you definitely. I'm literally not, dude. If you make $400 million, I don't care. I, I, I wish I you would. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Dollars, please. I, all right, I'm, just I'm just pointing, I'm just pointing out, bro. I'm just pointing out. Also, the objective Austin. fact that it's C part. Austin, so. I love you, but hold on. Now, here's a picture that Austin shared. Nobody denies that this picture exists. Austin, what does what do you say this is showing? Now, remember, yeah. I, I keep bringing it back because I, you know, people who are watching aren't as balls deep as you guys both are in the topic. You know what I mean? Sure. So, this is just a picture to me. What what does yeah. what what does what does this show? Okay, so this was the world record at the time. It's been beaten now for the longest line of sight photograph ever taken. This is a mountain called Pic Pic Gaspard. Okay? okay, and it was so now on a globe. If I look out, the Earth should be curving and blocking things in the distance, similar to how I can't look around a corner, right? Very like if I look, it's like looking at a hill. So if uh, based on but your it's height, taken at twelve thousand feet, though, right? Correct. Right. So what you do is you you pull up Earth Curve Calculator. You put the observer height in. Okay. And then you'll it'll tell you where the horizon will be, and it'll tell you how much of the target hidden height there is. So this is from the Earth Curve Calculator official calculator. And if you look at it, the observer was nine thousand feet up. The target hidden height, oh, meaning sorry, how much yeah. Earth curvature should be there, is sixteen thousand feet, and the top of the tallest part of the mountain is only twelve thousand feet. That means the top of that mountain should be four thousand feet below Earth curvature. Okay. okay, and then Dave, so, what do you say to that? I two things. One, I cannot verify any of those numbers. Those could absolutely be fabricated by you. Yeah. And number two, we're not doing any of the math. So those are two things that are not being verified. So instead, let's talk about something purely conceptual and intuitive. Why can we see farther with elevation? You're on the screen. You, be careful. What happened? I know. Awesome. Okay, no, I was just saying this guy's just denying basic. Hey, somebody, as no, somebody no, 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 own, I put my basic own home address on when I didn't realize it, so I was just telling. Uh, no, no, good, yeah, I get you. Good look. Okay, yeah. okay, let me finish the thing I was yeah, saying. Go ahead. Sorry, Dave. Go ahead. So we can't verify any of these numbers. So instead, let's just talk about something very simple and intuitive. If we are uh, looking at something at the horizon, if we go up in elevation, we can see farther. That mm -hmm. is not intuitive on a flat earth because that actually increases the distance to the horizon, right? If you're going up, now there's an, an additional distance, right? If you get a hypotenuse, that's always going to be longer than the leg there. So why can we see further with higher elevation? That doesn't make any sense. Okay. 
That's insanely incorrect. So will you change what, your what, angle what of view. Incorrect? Okay, so just address the point, right? I so, did. Okay, go ahead. Within, you just said within seven incorrect. seconds. It, it, Austin, he made a claim you're, you're that here it doesn't make any here. sense. It's if you go up, this is math. even farther now, right? If you're here and you're looking at something here and you go up in elevation, that thing is now further away from you. So why can you see further with additional elevation? Because you're increasing your angle of view. Increasing your you didn't angle know that? of view. You can see, what you, that, how can you see a further distance? We're not talking about an angle, a further distance. How can you see because now view? you're changing your angle of view, so you're increasing your angular resolution and the things that you can pick up in the distance. Also, the ground ramps further? up due to perspective. Dude, dude, ramps just imagine, up? just think, just think about it simply. If I was on a on a flat floor and I laid my head down on the floor, as I start to stand up, I'm gonna be able to see further along the floor because my angle of view increases. This is again not exclusive to a globe Earth. And why? And you deflect it away from the observation that refutes the globe again. Because I can't verify any of these numbers or the math. They're just lying about them. Okay, so if the numbers are correct, then you concede it refutes the globe. Probably not. No. Okay, then answer it as if it, the answer because these these are not my numbers. Okay, I don't know that. Everyone at home is going to be able to go look it up. It's it's a official photography professional photography website. I just want to let you guys both know. Uh, at the start of the show, I did a poll. Just so it's uh, with about 3,000 votes, it's 65% globe gang, 35% flat friend, which I thought I, I'm going to run it again at the end because I thought, you know, this would be fun and a fun experience. Well, gonna nobody's going to change their mind here. <laughs> that's, that's <pretty laughs> well, that's probably, you're probably true. So you've watched online debates before, Dave. So the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, not really. I just, I mean, he brings his flat earth, uh, you know, people and i mean they're they impervious to facts and logic so they're not going to change says the guy that says ducking a picture yeah i'm ducking a picture because it's a picture right i'm talking about very simple physical concepts right i'm talking about observations that we can all agree on like the observation of the celestial sphere rotating counterclockwise versus clockwise that you cannot explain that only makes sense on a spherical earth that we used in ancient times to prove that the earth is a sphere that's why sphere is the default position that you're trying to undermine by well, talking but hey, about real fast real fast can we show some yeah. intellectual honesty i understand that you don't know these numbers and fair enough okay fair. you we want to verify them that's I mean, fair that's fair yeah. i'm asking you in good faith mm -hmm. if the numbers were correct which they are what well, would on. be you your response <laughs> you can say if My the numbers were correct Okay. Yeah, it's just it's an intellectually honest question, and, and it's actually disingenuous to avoid addressing the evidence just with the cop out that I can't verify the numbers no, right now. It's actually really not because when you have an entire model that is all interconnected and all observable phenomena are explained by that model, one singular datum, like one photo, is not going to be powerful enough to undermine an entire model. If the numbers were true and if the math wasn't fudged, then I would say, okay, there's probably some kind of atmospheric effect. Or some kind of thing that I'm not on, that I am not aware of that is making us see a little bit further. Maybe it's something that particular day. There's a, a particular humidity, or it's it's clearly over water that's going to increase the atmospheric refractive effects. None of these observations are ever done over land. I think that's why. Same with the skyline of Chicago. They're always People, done over water for you yeah. guys. So there's something clearly just one singular explanation that is missing, and that's why one datum is not going to undermine an entire model that explains every single thing about the world that we live in from everything we see in the night sky to geological phenomena to just absolutely everything in our world right so hand, hand wave dismissal mind. red herring fallacies appeal to possibilities that's Walk your rebuttal okay we can move on fallacy, right, fallacy, name the... fallacy 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 let's move do you, on do you, do you know that fallacies are important dave no i know that you guys name random fallacies to pretend that you've won something when you didn't that's you literally I appealed to possibilities you said there's probably something that could possibly be happening you literally did a textbook appeal to possibility it's okay. a, it's all good. you're pretending that one observation okay. is worth more than thousands no. upon thousands of observations every single okay. day i showed I, I showed 10 i showed 10 it doesn't matter you're, you're just affirming the consequent and reifying your model by saying it explains everything what about the what about like the micro we see too far we see too what far we see too what about the long distance radio anything. waves what about what about when we shoot radio waves line of sight that's thousands called of erratic e propagation it bounces off a layer of the atmosphere 
Okay, so that's right, called on, sky wave propagation. Okay, hold on. Erratic ED on, propagation. On. Everyone's had their their say on that. Okay, let me ask you um, what another thing that I found fascinating as a as a uh, normie is the is the is the contention between the glow. What do they call? Do you, Dave, a globo a glober? I don't know. Glo what is the name? Heads globe. <laughs> globe. So I don't care. And then oh, so the globe, the globe people and the flat people. Is the idea that one of the things that I saw um, Austin talk about and you talk about was that essentially five thousand years ago there was a different North Star and the, and the question around whether or not the stars move because that that is actually paramount to the idea that the Earth is rotating around the Sun versus the Earth being the center of the universe. So in can um, Austin, I'm gonna I'll, I'll go to Austin then I'll go to Dave and then next time I'll start with Dave. Um, so in the flat earth model, do, is it that the stars, can you explain the stars thing to, to, to the layman in the flat earth model? Okay. Wait, wait, the star thing, like the question you just asked about the star moving or something else. Well, I thought maybe I misunderstood. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought the, the flat earth, um, but mindset was that the stars did not move. Is that not true? Sure. Am I wrong okay. about that? Okay. Okay. Well, or correct the me. claim. Yeah. There is a claim that the North Star used to be a different star, and it's a very vague, ambiguous claim based on like ar architecture. So there's no actual legitimate evidence verifying that. For all legitimately recorded history, we have Polaris. But there is something called a kinematic equivalence, which sure that sounds fancy, but it's not. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I'm, I know, I know you're explaining it, but you didn't. Add, so is it? What do the what does what is the flat Earth position on stars? Do they move or do they not move? They, they move every day. That's called sidereal rotation. If you mean over time, there or does seem time. to be a, a slight progression of the stars. But what I'm trying to explain is that okay. isn't exclusive yes, to the Earth moving or not moving, right? It's called kinematic equivalence, which is what relativity is about, relative motion. It's like, oh, is the plane moving or am I moving? You can never tell. That's what the globe model says. So anything that moves in the sky... Would it could by default not prove that we were the ones moving according to the official globe model? That's the point I'm making. It's called a kinematic okay. equivalence. So the, whatever the stars are doing, because we can't go back thousands of years and verify if the North Star was different, whether it was or wasn't, it it doesn't prove okay. the Earth is moving. So Dave, Nick. your response to that? Yeah, a couple things. Uh, number one, uh, the North Star became Polaris in like 600 CE or something. Six so thousand years well ago, or something. Yeah. No, no, no. Way more recent than that. Uh, Polaris. Uh, I mean, it was Thuban in the times of the of the Egyptians became Polaris. Okay. So that's well documented. But furthermore, we don't need to do that. We can very uh, accurately observe Milankovitch cycles. We can see the precession of the rotational axis happens every year. It could be measured. And then there's parallax and all these other things. But that's not really what matters because again, he's trying to do this thing. Thing where he doesn't have to def where 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 he where he's pretending that geocentrism doesn't assume a spherical earth when the argument was going on uh in the renaissance early renaissance about geocentrism and heliocentrism we knew that the earth was a sphere so every time he does this kinematic equivalence thing kinematic equivalence the kinematic equivalence he's trying to refer to is whether the earth goes around the sun or if the sun goes around the earth not doing little donuts on a pizza land. That's not an equivalence. Those are not equal things. We're talking about one going around one or the other going around the other. Those are the two things. So geocentrism, you often try to defend a geocentric model. It assumes a spherical earth. That is an actual model that can, to some reasonable precision, describe the motions of the celestial objects and put them where they're supposed to go and predict quantitatively where they're going to be. Flat Earth doesn't have that. You don't have any model. You don't have any way of saying this is where the planets are going to be. This is when an eclipse is going to happen. Any of these things, you absolutely cannot do any of those things. That's why I told you in the beginning, if you want to talk, if you want to defend geocentrism, that's totally fine. We can talk about how we know that the Earth moves, which is a completely different topic from knowing whether the earth is round or flat because geocentrism uses a spherical earth. Okay. Response to that, Austin. Okay. So what's happening is I'm, I'm specifically addressing the singular point in your gish galloping. No. So like, it, it, you want me to address everything you just said, You're right? Like for one, for one, geo kinematic equivalence, kinematic equivalence it has nothing to do. How about with this? Just, I'll, I'll ask, I'll throw it back to you real quick. Why is geocentrism exclusive to the earth being a sphere? 
because it's a model that works. Flat Earth doesn't work. It doesn't explain anything we see, like the observations of the celestial sphere that you keep running away from. You cannot explain yeah. why the answer. stars rotate one way in the north and the other way in the south. Yeah. You cannot okay. explain that. All right, I'm going to take my time back and let me respond to everything you said because you, you didn't answer. So the answer is that it's not because with, yeah, you with everything – You didn't answer. That's fine. You didn't. You just started oh. talking about star trails again. So with everything going on in the quote-unquote universe, you said the universe wouldn't exist. No, maybe not as you've defined it, but with everything going on, all the quote-unquote planets, everything moving around, the Earth's shape doesn't matter. You just project that relative does, to your though. projection. You create a transform relative to your projection you or your assignment. Of motion. observations of the night Buddy, sky. On I let you finish. Here. Chill out. Okay. So yeah, yeah, let, the, let him finish. Let him finish, Dave. So the truth is that all observations have shown that the Earth is stationary. We have the cosmic microwave background, which showed anisotropic inhomogeneous distribution of energy, which is the exact opposite of the heliocentric prediction, and intersected on the Earth. The 23.4 degree axis was on a non-local observation. Salad. Dude, define word salad. You're just using words. You're trying to pretend that cosmology proves the earth is flat. Then all cosmologists would be flat earthers. Do you have any Straw idea how insane you sound? No, it's not. You're pretending to understand cosmology. You're pretending what to understand- What did I say that was word salad, world. Dave? Huh? No, I'm saying it's word salad because it is word salad. Yeah, I, like that. Word. The I said that was word salad. We're talking about the shape of the earth. You're defending a flat earth, which we figured out it isn't true in 2,500 years ago. And you're trying to you're trying to talk about modern cosmology to try to talk about this when you can't even explain naked eye observations of the stars in the sky. Okay, you look, they're directly it. related. The idea is that the earth is a tilted, wobbling, spinning sphere that revolves around the sun. The alternative is that the earth is a geocentric, stationary plane. Both of no, those are directly related. Sphere. That is a stationary sphere was the alternative. Mm -hmm. Prior to heliocentri heliocentrism, Dude. we knew we no. thought that it was a, a stationary Stop interrupting. sphere. For, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. You keep hold, going, hold, you keep going off on. the rails. I got to bring you back to what we're talking about. Hold on, guys. Okay. I'm getting some flack for allowing too much interruptions. That's on me. I'm, I know that you both of you feel passionately about this, but please try to keep that to a minimum. But I do want to say, um, most importantly, um, I think it's really important and really cool that both of you took time out on a Saturday night to get online and do this and stream. And, and I want to I just want to thank, you know, I just want to give a shout out. I don't care who people back who are watching or whatever, you know, um, both channels are linked in the description. Uh, Wits it gets it if you're a, if you know or Professor Dave. I, ideally, you'd subscribe to both and and consume both people's content and you know make make up your own mind. I I just want to you know before you know emotions heat up too much, just you know say hey I appreciate you both being here. I know that it's a it's a weekend night. Can I if you'll allow me? I'm getting called a coward for not bringing up the edge apparently, which is I assume one of the more controversial opinions. Uh, that, that, and, and Austin, I think it's fair for you to say, Hey, I showed up and I'm the one that has to answer. I'm the one that has to defend all our positions. But I also think that's a result of the fact that the spherical earth is the commonly accepted opinion. So sure. I, I want to be fair and I, I, I'm not doing awesome at it, but I, I'm trying. So I want to say like, um, if there are specific positions against the sphere or against the that you want dave to answer for you know i mm -hmm. want to give him that give you that opportunity but one thing that is very what i found fascinating today was the idea of the ice wall or antarctica there's a lot of craziness around that because what i thought just being unbiased trying to be unbiased but i, mean, I guess being honest that is very hard for me to believe the like because people can literally go to antarctica it's not it's not a it's like i saw i watched a lot of flat earth video i told you guys before i watched uh almost eight hours and i was like these bastards better show up because i spent my whole saturday watching flat earth videos but like i i was watching like the antarctica thing which is a common talking point and um people go there all the time so what is the flat earth position about the rim basically that's what people in chat are asking that what is mm -hmm. what's going on on the edges uh, in the flat earth? And then, Dave, I'll give you a chance. To, is that OK? And I'll give you a chance mm -hmm. to respond to that. OK. All right. All right. 
first of all, I'm to address the first part. I'm cool with asking questions. That's the natural response because Flat Earth is so out of left field for most people. Yeah. But that's more of like a normal conversation thing, not a like he's supposed to be debating anything. But it's all good. Okay. I'm pretty chill. I mean, I can let you but, guys just go at it too if that's what you no, want. No, it's cool. I'll answer, I'm going to answer your question. I don't. Okay. okay. This is the typically held position. You cannot freely and privately explore past the 60th south latitude, okay, which is a ring around the outside. So to independently and freely identify and verify what all is out there is not possible. Do people go there? Yes. You can go on approved guided tours. Most of the time, it's it's like just a couple locations. They say it's super dangerous. I have a friend that was a, this is anecdotal, but a former NASA employee was stationed there for six months. He's a flat earther. It's admittedly the highest elevation on earth. So when people say ice wall, I mean, there are videos and pictures of what you would call an ice Wait, wall. It's the, the highest, highest elevation on, on the earth. Hold on, hold on. No, highest elevation on earth in Antarctica. Hi, highest average elevation. So not like Mount Everest, the highest average elevation average. of okay. a continent. Okay. okay. That might yeah. Be. So, so we're, we're saying we don't know what's there. And oftentimes people get this straw man. It's like flat, flat earthers say you can't go to Antarctica. People go there all the time. No, we're saying you can't freely and privately explore it, right? Like if I let you in my house, but you couldn't go upstairs, you couldn't tell me what was upstairs, right? Sex, like a it's sex dungeon, the, I would know. So are you going to yeah. go with Will Duffy to the South Pole? He's paying for you. I, I I told him when he first emailed me before I even knew who he was, that I was open to going. I had specific parameters, which is that they can't take my words out of context and make a hit piece like they always do, that they have to be forthcoming about all the funding and all the stuff like that. And I said, I would go. I have no reason not to right? go. Hold on, Dave. What's up? Can, can you hold on? Can you explain the will? Because I know about the will Duffy thing, but most so, people watch. Yeah, it. I didn't know. I was getting these emails and not even knowing who he was, so I didn't reply. But he, uh, this guy, Will Duffy, has been emailing uh, flat earthers and and people who make flat earth debunking content about paying to bring some people to the South Pole to observe the twenty four hour sun. He's which like some flat eccentric earthers. billionaire guy, right? Uh, I don't sense. really know or anything about guy. him, and I don't know how much money he has. I don't think he's yeah, a billionaire. I think he has enough of money of to pay for a couple people to go. Because I, I will go. Like, yeah, I'll do I mean, the South Pole tour. I, I <laughs> wouldn't. I have things to do. But uh, I would love for some flat earthers to go and see the 24 hour uh, sun. And uh, so mm -hmm. uh, most yeah. most flat earthers are already making excuses. Uh, Weiss is saying he doesn't want to go because they're, he's evil Satan or something. I don't know what well, he's Austin talking about. Austin said he would go. Okay. That's yeah, great. Right. And, 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 and clear, Dave's right? position was that it, he doesn't respect people that are dishonest and hide behind anonymity and stuff like that. So whatever i said i would go because dude i'm not scared of anything did you know I'm a flat earther? did he contact you yeah, yeah yeah he sent like a mass email and i when i saw it i responded i said dude look i'll go it has to be transparent honest people have stolen money they claim on their videos they're gonna fly us and then we contact them they're like i'm yeah. not gonna actually fly you. that's just yeah. for my youtube video but he still has a gofundme up to make flat earthers look bad so okay. i said if it's honest i'll go i'm not scared of the truth dude I, i'm a flat earther because i you can go see mountains from hundreds of miles away consistently like it doesn't add up the math doesn't add up so um anyway and Can i bring it back i, I don't know how that's going to manifest but as of now it looks like it could be me and jaron going with i guess dave mcgeegan or something but well i give you and when we don't see the 24-hour sun what are you going to have to see so if you go all right here right here and right now you go you see 24-hour sun you come back you make a video because look we've I, I saw this in Dave's video. I, I I feel like I've saw you, and I have also. We've everyone's been wrong. It's not like a big deal. I'm not saying you are. But I'm saying what will it take? Like if you go down there and you see what 24 hour sunlight, you'll come back and say, "All right, cool. I'm cool. It's globe global. I'm I'm a global guy now." What would it take if you went to the South Pole for you to change your mind? If I saw a 24 hour sun that does a 360 around me, like the girl predicts, I would. Would readily that like? admit like that doesn't What's 360 up? around me look like 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 the sun should just do a full circle around you and never set just like it does in the north in the midnight sun you do the same thing in the south what does yeah. it look like if in that, alaska when it's light for 24 hours there do you do it you literally does if you're if you're far enough north you can just see the sun do a full circle around you which is Dave, which is what you, the flat earth predicts as well what's up Dave? do you have any issue with that i don't know i've never been there no I'm great there. i can't wait i really hope they go and then when they yeah. come back that's the end of flat earth because that will be it. And we well, well, let me finish what I was saying. I like, okay, yes, it, go ahead. it listening. would match the globe. I would step back and be like, whoa, I don't expect it to. So I would admit, yeah, that's kind of, that's weird. That matches the globe. That's not expected on the flat earth from my understanding, blah, blah, blah. I'd openly admit it. Isn't that what you just did to me about the photograph where I was thinking of uh, another explanation? What? No, or no, no. 
No, 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 no. I wouldn't I didn't even say that yet, but maybe. But the, a more definitive test, actually, is to charter a plane, fly far enough south, have multiple mechanical gyros spinning up that maintain rigidity in space. They should tip over as you go, and then it should flip over. So it should tip and flip based on the curvature of the Earth. If, say, that test in the 24-hour sun was actually, actually manifested, which I don't have high hopes for, I would, if I found out for sure the Earth's a globe, I would be the first one to come out and admit I was wrong. Because that doesn't prove one, right. one like thing that doesn't though. prove is that we're flying through space. Totally it doesn't prove any of this other nonsense. Okay, well, let me ask this. So, you know, I feel like Austin's been on a bit of the hot seat. So let me come out. Let me pose a question uh, to Dave. I, I watched a bunch of your videos today. Um, I, I actually really appreciate I can definitely tell you're a teacher because all of your PowerPoint slides gave me PTSD back to my <laughs> college days. I'm good with slides. But, yeah. I actually, when I was getting my master's degree, I saw a, a professor that used overhead projectors that he had like written in the 70s. Old school. Yeah. Yeah. But <clears throat> I, I've heard the terminology around flat earth several times in your videos about, about grifting, right? Mm -hmm. um, what is the grift? Like, what is the, is it that, like, what is the grift in saying that there's a flat earth? Can you, can you kind of describe that? Because I, I don't see a lot of these flat earth guys being like, give me money. Like, well, so what is it's it? just a little cult and there's super chats and they do the conferences and all these things. That's all it is. So there's it's not, it's not like a huge grift. It's not like Scientology or something, but okay. We all agree. Scientology is a huge grift, right? I hope we all I, agree. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dude, flat earth doesn't make you money, bro. I, I get demonetized all the time. I'm deprioritized. It's it. Yeah. And I had to lose a six figure job offer for because I had flat earth videos online. Okay. It is, if I was, if you were going to grift, why would you pick the thing that doesn't make money? Because you're like, it doesn't make a better sense. grift. If you, you could do you like you could do, I I've been debunking Billy Carson and some of these guys on the, on the Rogan thing. That guy mm -hmm. actually makes money lying about, uh, you know, archeology span and alien, ancient aliens and stuff like that. That would be a smarter grift. What? Okay. Um, anyway, okay. I, but, but this is the problem. People are going to get so triggered that like Dave's not being forced to actually address his, his improper. Okay. Questions. Well, what is I'm it? I'm just going to be real. I'm just gonna no, be no, real. he's right here. He's right. Okay. Hold on, Dave. All right. All right. What is it? You know, articulate the question that Dave has not answered. And then Dave, you know, uh, the floor is all yours. ears. Okay, yeah, so like I explained earlier, when we looked at the cosmic microwave background, it actually showed that there was, he called this word salad, anisotropic. Wait, what is it? The I just want to, we're not all, remember, we're not all, so what did you say, the, the what microwave? It's called the background? cosmic microwave background, CMB, which is just, you send something up high in the air and you read the electromagnetic radiation. You know, there's there's the visible spectrum of light, then there's the non-visible spectrum. It's pulling in all the data from the light that you can't see with your eyes. If right, you've ever researched flat Earth, you know this image, right? Dave's seen this. Probably, image. yeah. I mean, most people certainly do with flat Earth. I mean, this is cosmology. No, oh, hold on, it's, yeah, but hold on, Dave. Okay. Hold on, just let him. Yeah, yeah, just let him. It's about know. G. It's Go about ahead. is the Earth moving or not? So, okay. in the current model that the Earth is flying around the Sun, the universe, whatever, it's every all the energy should be evenly distributed. That's called homogeneous, and it should be isotropic, meaning it has no preferred direction. Okay, okay, but what they saw was that it was inhomogeneous and anisotropic, and actually the part that had a preferred direction intersected on the Earth. And they ended up calling it the axis of evil. And then what they saw was that this, this anisotropic inhomogeneous distribution of energy was actually on a 23.4 degree tilt, which was supposedly the Earth's tilt, but it was see observed way beyond our quote unquote galaxy, which means it could not have been the Earth tilted. So it's a major problem. The CMB matched the geocentric model. No, okay, awesome. Um, so you're talking, okay, so this image, right? The CMB model, right? You're saying... How does this one thing I'm I, again, I'm a layman, so I feel like I'm speaking for just regular people who are watching. What about this? Does does should Dave talk about when it comes to the the sphere heads? You know, the so when you talk about uh, the the microwave, whatever. How, well, how does this relate to flat Earth is what my question is. This is just about if the Earth is geocentric or not. If the universe is geocentric, okay, so, so that's a different conversation, then, right? Because the the, the it's not though. The planet it's not could though. be a, yes, it is because the planet could be a sphere but still be geocentric. It right? could be yes, yes, that's right. Okay, so it but is different. The point is that the mainstream model we were all inundated with was that the Earth is a spinning globe. So right. the alternative is that the Earth is a stationary plane. And okay. what always happens is the people that believe in the spinning globe. They want to avoid the, the burden of proof for both of those things, curvature and motion. And if they think they can say, what's an eclipse, then somehow the, they, they don't have to explain all the evidence that shows the Earth's not a spinning globe. And that How is illogical. 
Austin, how do you explain eclipses? You brought it up. I didn't bring it up. So well, I don't know. It's one up for, I mean, let's not jump See, topics here. Okay. I'll shut up. You're right. You're right, Dave. Thanks for keeping me in line. Yeah. Go on. You can yeah. go give whatever you want after this, but no, this is, this is what Austin relies on. This is why he's so incapable of, of doing but what does it about. supposedly prove? I'm sorry. So no, what does at the earth's in the center of the universe? Got it. Okay. Dave. Respond. Okay. So no, it absolutely doesn't. Otherwise cosmologists would all agree that earth earth was at the center of the universe. Right. This is all freely available information that you're finding on Wikipedia. If this demonstrated what you're saying it does, that would be the consensus among people who study this for a living. It is not. And that doesn't do what you're saying. You're just saying it does. This is what you do. Right. You need to talk about esoteric aspects of modern physics because your viewers don't understand what you're talking about. And they just believe you instead of talking about very simple things like which I want to keep bringing you back to. Why is it that people looking in different directions can all see the Southern Cross at the same time? Very simple, intuitive things. These are what we should be discussing. Sure. Okay. So hand wave dismissal, appeal to consensus, and appeal, hand appeal wave. to You're just appeal lying to about authority. What it says. You're just lying about what it says. You, you said if it said what I said, all the experts would agree. The yes, consensus is that there is no ex that. the consensus the is that is there's homogenous. The CMB is the homogenous. This is common knowledge. The consensus is that there's no legitimate explanation that's agreed upon for it. And it was originally rejected and then redone and showed the same unexpected results and then done again and shown the same unexpected results. That's the actual truth. There isn't a legitimate consensus answer from your paradigm. doesn't matter. When it, you want to keep talking about the stars, you said look different directions. Just like when Dave Weiss was talking to you, he tried to tell you magnetic declinations a thing. And you called that jargon and said that that wasn't a real thing. You're just making up words. I didn't say you made it up. I just said he's saying magnetism for no reason because it's nothing to do with what I was talking about. How it, is it, magnetic it, declination going to allow you to see the same thing by looking in different directions? Explain. You go uh, ahead. Uh, go ahead. And you have to do man, okay. what Weiss said. We're going to see that you didn't follow him then either. And that is that you're talking about directions. You're invoking cardinal directions. Mm -hmm. How do you determine your directions? So if you're going to use a compass, according to your paradigm, when you get to the south, the magnetic declination gets way worse. That Why do means I need a compass? There, Can I use geographical you, phenomena? Can I point in a particular geographical direction by known landmarks? Don't we know well, on a map? How did you know? How do you know the exact? First of all, when you're looking at the stars all the way to the Southern Cross, what known landmarks are you going to use? Anything on the tips of those continents. What are you talking about? You're standing okay, at okay. the tip of a Southern continent. Look, I'll give you, let's say you're off by a degree or two. Okay, fine. We're looking a little bit this way, a little bit that way. On the graphic no. that I showed you, they're looking in completely different directions, all seeing the Southern Cross at the same time. It doesn't make sense. You can't. First of all, it's not a degree or two, Dave. It is dozens and dozens of degrees if you go far enough south it is actually 179 degrees at one how point far south? how far south very to, to, near to, the magnetic yeah, pole yeah in your in your paradigm which your your magnetic poles in the ocean but the point is yeah. that the point is dude if you're going to say i'm looking south for sure you're relying on magnetic declination corrections okay but that's no. the point dave was making you hand wave dismissed it and it's just I, a I fact can, i can go is, outside of my house and and look north without looking at a compass because i know which way north is on a map do you use a compass every day to orient yourself or do you just know which way the cardinal's directions are yeah, but in, in the north, we have a Polaris to go off of, right? No, 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 and we no, have no. like a on a map, on a street, walking around on, the street. You've I know, got a I'm, grid of streets, you know which way is north. Do you need a compass to do that? Well, actually, if you use the compass, it will show you different directions over time. I'm asking you, how so do you verify the south? Use geography. How do you, ver you, dude, how did you verify the exact cardinal direction of different geographical input? Okay, but let's just anyway, you don't understand that point apparently, but it doesn't matter. Even or if you're just desperately pivoting. No, no, dude. You you said that it wasn't a real thing, and now I you didn't think say it wasn't a real thing. I said it's you're terrible. just bringing up magnetism for no reason because you think that's no, going to save you. It's, it's, it's almost a, it's, verbatim it's what how, I thought. It's how else? You're saying it. the only other way to verify it is to look at geography. Dude, okay, so, you're pretending so anyway. that if I'm looking at what I know is south on a map, that I could somehow be pointing basically north or near north. Is that really how much of a dis distortion you think is physically possible when you're just using a map to look south? You don't just use, okay, I'm trying to explain to you that in your paradigm, in the south, the magnetic declination gets crazy. In theory, could that be true? Where, sure. where does it get crazy? How close yeah. to the magnetic Below pole the do you have to get in order for it to, for it to get crazy? How close Wherever to the Wherever you're viewing pole? the southern cross from is far enough south that the magnetic declination is a significant is factor. Is it though? Because it's yes. not really that close to the magnetic pole. 
No, but it can still be 40, 50 degrees magnetic declination no, in couldn't. your paradigm. No, it Yes, couldn't. you can go to magnetic-declination.com and look it up. The other thing is there's something called an azimuthal grid. So we actually see the world in a little azimuth grid. That's how we measure it, right? That's how we measure the stars. We take our zenith, and then we take elevation measurements down to our, ele our azimuth. So it gives you a little dome. Now, when you actually run this through a software, you will see that if you had a bunch of stars circling over top of you and you had this little limit of vision that was a dome, you will actually see the stars appear to converge at a point where they're actually not converging and circle around that point. We have replicated it, so we actually expect it. The problem is we need to verify the exact coronal direction to even put that input into the software to know for sure, to sh give you a flat Earth model you all beg for, and it is impossible to 100% verify the coronal directions that far south. So hold on, hold on. All right, um, okay. You so have I'm no getting, such yeah. model. You have no such thing, or you would have shown it. You would have all been celebrating it in all your videos. You can't. We've shown it. it. We have shown it. Well, bring it up. I'm going to let you bring it up, Austin. Um, I want to say this. Go ahead and take a minute. Bring it up. Uh, I, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So I, I've, I've, I wanted to keep this to, you know, maybe 30, are you guys okay with 30 more minutes? Is that okay? Or yeah. 20, um, 20, 30. 20, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so is, are you guys okay with, uh, I want to just pull the pin on a grenade, chuck it in and back out and let you guys go at it because I'm getting yelled at for interrupting too much. Um, uh, but also would you guys be okay with the last 10 minutes of the show? We looked at some um, viewer questions. Is that okay? So can, can we do sure. 20, uh, you know, are you guys okay with 25 more minutes or no? Yeah, it's, I am, that's, it's fine. It's fine. It, it's fine. But I just, to no, me, wait, 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 hold on. You good with 25 more minutes? Yeah. Awesome. Dave. Okay. So I want to let everyone know, Hey, again, I remain, I I'm getting a lot of shit for being, you know, maybe interrupting too much, but I just want to let people, I, I, I try to pick my spots, but what matters most is that these two gentlemen spent Saturday evening with me, three dudes on a date on Saturday night. We obviously could have been out there slaying puss, like incredible chads <laughs> like we are, but make sure you check out their channels in the description below. Uh, you know, Wits It Gets It has a, obviously a wide variety of content available, as well as Professor Dave. Please support their channels and please, you know, independently, if they have Patreons or whatever, support them directly. I want to, I have, uh, obviously, everyone's pissed that I haven't brought up the ice wall, the edge, or the dome. That's the last thing I want to end on. But I did want to ask you about this video. I'm a big yeah. SpaceX, guy, SpaceX guy. I'm a big... Uh, you know, I'm a big space guy. We're on SpaceX. I'm sorry, right now. bro. Sorry, like I know. Sorry, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of it's fake, brother. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Well, that's what people say. So when we watch this, I won't watch it. But right, so this was the space jump, right? We can obviously see the Earth is digitally or not curved, yeah. right? This mm -hmm. guy, you know, jumps out. This is when I think flat Earth. I've actually because I watch this video like in real time because I'm a space dork um you know keep that in mind when we discuss not that my opinion matters it's really the viewers opinions that matter and then i'll ask them in five minutes so i want to bring up the conversation actually you know what is there something that either one of you dave or austin that you really want to like I'm, i fucked up and i didn't talk about it because I, i'm you know you've already given a bunch of your time should we not talk about the ice wall and the edge or the dome? Well, I think I already I already addressed that. We we can't freely probably the explore there. It's highest elevation in the world. Some oh, yeah. people that's think that's edge. what it could you be. talk about. Yeah, you can all go to. Well, you can't fall off the edge of a lake or a pond. We don't know what's beyond it. Could there be more land? Sure. Could there be something containing it that touches down? Sure. We literally can't freely and privately explore it. So we don't know. It's kind of like saying, mm -hmm. do you fall off the edge of a lake though? Like no, and not would serve as the shore. Make okay, sure well, you let go me... to the South Pole with Will. Make sure you get over there. I definitely yeah. I'm in um the okay so let can we me, address the felix thing though since you brought it up go ahead okay so he's yeah, talking I guess about you, the diver right the felix the, yeah 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 yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so it looks like the earth is a ball obviously uh an extremely small ball he's in though. lower earth orbit here he's not like, no he's not he, he he's one hundred and eighty thousand feet up so that's actually very low and it, this earth was sponsored orbit. 
real fast. This is sponsored by GoPro. So this is a GoPro fisheye lens. If you look at the video, the the angle from inside the cockpit or whatever you want to call it, you can actually see the horizons flat. So Neil deGrasse Tyson himself came out and addressed this idea that like people think that Felix was so high that he could see the curvature that of the earth. That, that's from the, that's from the cockpit. That doesn't look flat. No, there. that's not, that's from outside still using the GoPro. Well, that, that's now, exaggerated. You can we can admit you, that that you, is exaggerated curvature. Yeah. 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 It's it's not a, the curvature is still there. there. Yeah, it's in a squish. Well, you say right. that, okay, but according to even Neil deGrasse Tyson, you would never see the curvature of the Earth from that height because you'd only be two millimeters above a typical um, be blown up beach ball, or whatever. But what about that? The, the point that's important here is I've heard I've heard Dave say, and I don't watch Dave, so I'll be honest with you, bro. But like I listened to a few minutes of it earlier. You should. I you heard you say something. Your, you should watch your debunkers, dude. That's time well spent. No, no, I I've watched some of his older stuff. Okay. It's all the same stuff, bro. But anyway, so oh, this is the problem. I, obliterating your position. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. with all straw men. But look, this is oh, what I want to point out. Dave said that the this guy was in his balloon and it maintained the momentum due to the conservation of momentum with the spin of the earth. Mm -hmm. So when he fell out, he maintained that momentum. Yeah. Felix Bumgarner fell, like landed like dozens of miles in the opposite direction. Well, he accelerated though. When he... I mean, when when you watch this, he he did not. I mean, he did not maintain his position, right? He yeah. But if you're it. spinning underneath him, why would he fall in the opposite direction? In the opposite direction. What's going on while he's falling? Is it is there no interaction with the atmosphere? Is there absolutely no no change in what's going on? Well, well, there's not much Atmos up that high. You could say once he got down, he started drifting. If that's what you want to claim, I mean, I I, I actually looked at the weather data. It seemed like there wasn't much wind. I'm pointing out that your claim that he was just following the earth is patently false. He fell like 40 miles in the wrong direction. Okay, well, on a that isn't earth, curvature of earth. Straight up and straight down. So it actually obliterates your position. I don't know what you're gloating about here. What? I no, didn't know this was a flat earth. Flat earth going video. straight up and straight down. Why would, there, why would there be any discrepancy in where he lands if it was a flat earth? Okay, it wouldn't obliterate my position. We can both agree now. It has something to do with wind, and your claim that he was just following with the Earth is ridiculous and stupid yeah, just and like satellites not true. Ridiculous and stupid. That's obscene. But I think much more importantly, that was your what, claim, you absolutely, what you absolutely can't uh, explain is why that guy fell down. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, oh, the gravity. He, 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 gravity. Yeah, let's, let's do electric gravity. gravity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's. Uh, yeah, let's because he because he. Because he has he has weight when he's more dense in the air and he went what down. What is weight? It, it is mass times gravity. Mass is volume times density times downward acceleration. Gravity is little g, which is just downward acceleration, 9.8 yeah, meters second square, which Earth. you falsely claim that we can't derive, but you can do that with a kinematic equation, strictly a kinematic <laughs> yeah. equation. Get me yes, 9.81 meters per second squared without using the mass of the Earth. Literally, you can do it with a kinematic equation. It's Literally, also been yeah, done with the like see it. Where is yeah, it? Yeah, initial height, velocity, and time will give you the same exact 9.8 meter second value. That's just the effect. Did you know that 9.8 meters per second scare is just the effect? It isn't even like the claimed cause. What do you mean the claimed so, cause? It's it's a it's a value. It's an acceleration due to the mass of the earth. That's why G changes right. with radius, with elevation on different celestial bodies that's why g is different on the moon it's different on mars you think that's all fake of course but uh yeah, yeah. so uh but uh, very very simply you cannot explain why things fall down you just can't do it i, I can i, I no, yeah can't. everything it, it's more it's more dense than the air and so the question would be so why is there up and why does it go down why is, the, why is the it down that's your question is less yeah. dense too the air above it is less dense should fall up why is it what the Dude, air above an object. more dense than the air. It doesn't matter if the air above you is less dense than the air well, below. Why does it go it's... down? This air is less dense. In fact, this air is even less dense than this air. Why does it go okay, up? Okay, why would why would that mean it goes down? What do you mean why that mean? Because the mass of the earth, the mass of the earth is the thing's fault, the reason you that things fall down. Dude, dude, the, dude, no, well, dude, I let, dude. Helium, why hey, why does helium rise? Because it's less dense than air. There you go. It's so less it dense in the other the air. But okay. he pulls the air okay. down more than the helium. That's the what same you reason think. the beach ball goes up in the air, in the water. You're just reifying your belief. And this reify, is what's even reify, funnier. Reify, reify. Well, well, how is it reification? Dude. I'm not doing anything abstract See, and turning it Yeah, because uh, you have a concept. You have a concept of gravity in your mind, and you're attributing concreteness to it and just assuming it's true by treating I the concept as if it's actual. Anything because I know that it's exclusively an effect based on mass and not electromagnetism as you pretend. You absolutely can 
cannot use electromagnetism no. to explain anything that gravity explains. You can't I've never said electromagnetism. There's a downward electric current on the earth. This is actually another falsification is, of the globe. Are, we, we have a uniform. We have a, we're not part of the same thing. What do you mean? Not electromagnetism. We, we, we have a vertical electric field on the earth and it has a hundred volt per meter increase. It's mm -hmm. equipotential increase. It's a vertical electric with, field. Oh, it's a vertical electric field and it's uniform. And so we have a hundred volt, volts per meter. It's now that's uniform. impossible. That's uniform. impossible. It's not it, it, does it increase 100 volts per meter? No, it dissipates with elevation, which is why Felix can't be falling down due to electromagnetism. But does the does it increase 100 volts per meter for like 100 meters? And no, then the no. Dissipation. <laughs> No, your yeah, model you claims it's up, up to like 50 miles. Right there. Okay, look, even if whatever you're so you wrong say about that, everything, yeah. why doesn't anything fall up, Austin? Why doesn't anything fall up? I, Electromagnetism I may, I, is both attractive and repulsive, right? So some things are attracted to the earth. Why isn't anything repelled to, from the earth? Why doesn't it fall up to the other Gaussian surface or whatever you want to talk about? Why yeah, doesn't it well, fall okay, up? So, so first of all, so radial distribution of a sphere would not allow you to have equipotential parallel surfaces that are 100 why volts are per meter. Why, why does it no, no I'm finishing my point. Then wait, I'm, wait, I'm, wait, I'm just letting the audience hear the conclusion of the point. Let him answer. Let him answer. Let him answer. So, yeah. so that's going the going conclusion of the point that they previously avoided, which is that radial distribution of a sphere could not replicate what we have on the earth. But you said, why don't things go up? You mentioned my middle school experiment or whatever you called it, mm -hmm. right? Where I actually made something lift and I did it? it with, I, I did it with iron filings. I did it with multiple different materials, even insulators. So you said that doesn't count and I can't make big why? objects. Yeah. I can't why make can't big you know, okay. Massive. Hey, did look, you know that physics the, the bigger an object is the more charged particles there are in it, right? So the effect should be greater. Why can't you do it with a rock or a person? Why don't we see anything fall up ever? Because you would have to increase the amount of, say, electrostatics you introduce proportionate right. to its weight, which is, again, mass, which is volume times density relative to the pressure mediation aren't, of the atoms. Wait, wait, wait. I, my question mm, is, yum, does... Yum, 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 Dude, what did I say that was words out? All of it. You're just saying All words. All of it. I'm asking you. <laughs> You're just don't saying fall words. Up. In, look, in a field, char <laughs> par particles of opposite charges are accelerated in opposite directions, right? So why can't you make anything fall up? Why doesn't anything on the earth fall up? It's a very simple just, question. I, I'm trying to explain I have it. Seen so. A lot of people fail up. I'm just saying. Fail up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to make it. It's really a simple concept. So. When you have something that has weight, that's volume times density, okay? That's mass. And then volume times density times acceleration. Little g is just downward acceleration, just an effect. So whenever that's the case, that what pressure mediates. Gravity? Acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration. That's what you guys believe. That's what he thinks, that's okay? Yeah. Little g is just the effect. It isn't exclusive to any belief. I, okay. Okay. Well, everyone keeps invoking little g as if it's proof of, I guess, the bending and warping of space and time or whatever. Well, we don't even have to go with electricity. Or, I mean, I know uh, you, sorry, you can't. You can't go that route. Trust Newton? me. We know. Well, no, we you can't. Relativity is one of the most corroborated theories in the history of science. But it doesn't matter. No, it's well, not. You can just use Newton. Well, it is. Though. It was falsified in 1933. Fritz Zwick. Okay. He was off by nine. Definitely was never falsified. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me ask this question, dude. It's a simple yeah. question. You said that my experiment doesn't do anything. In yeah. reality, what I did was manipulate the electric field, and then it caused the objects to go up, even what though that they did, were heavier than the what air. What you did was proving... apply an enormous electric field to overwhelm the effects of gravity. You took a different okay. force, electromagnetism, no. to overwhelm gravity for a teeny tiny little object, a teeny tiny little object. Right. Once again, what I just said, a very massive object, a lot of matter, has more charged particles. In my body, there are many, many more charged particles than a tiny yeah. piece of stuff. From so what about that be greater? Can't we accelerate up? Can't we levitate? Can't we fly? Why not? We're talking I just have a simple about... question. You won't let me get it out because you know you won't. Want I to answer. just answered it. Ask the question then. Ask the question. Okay, I try, I try, I've tried like three times. Okay. It's yeah. simple. You're saying that doesn't count because I can't do it with bigger objects. Yeah. Do you know that physics scales? Yeah, so a larger object, <laughs> more charged particles, the effect should be greater. Why doesn't anything? So you fall you agree up? though that if I do the same principle on a bigger scale, if I increase the force proportionate to the object, I would be able to make things go up. And yeah, your claim that you can't do it with bigger objects is completely ridiculous. Non you would be countering gravity. You would be countering gravity. I'm acting. You I'm just reifying gravity here. again. You're s stop saying reification. Do you have any idea how dumb you sound when you say hold reification? On, on. Yeah, yeah, come on now, come on. Okay, okay. You're just begging the question over and over, dude. Right, You're just saying, question. I promise. Hold on, fellas. 
We're Listen, it, we're bringing it home. Can you can only do this with a Van der Graaff generator because you are applying an external field to overwhelm gravity. You're saying that out there in no. the world, it's all electrostatic, so we shouldn't need a Van der Graaff generator. Out there in the world where yeah. this is an electromagnetic effect, and we know that mm -hmm. elect electromagnetism is both attractive and repulsive, mm -hmm. out there in the world, why doesn't anything fall up ever? Okay. First of all, depending on the environment, say like your hair will stick up during thunderstorms, bumblebees literally do something called non-contact pollen detachment. They fly over top of the flowers and the pollen levitates. Literally, there is naturally occurring phenomena that's based on the electric field of the earth. You're saying we're adding an external force. No, we're manipulating the, the force that's already there. Let me finish. We're manipulating uh, the force that's already there. I didn't add anything. Everything that exists is electrostatic right? Which is on the smallest scale no. is 10 to 36 power stronger than your belief in gravity and all molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic. That means all objects that exist are held yeah. together by that. So you're acting like I'm adding I something that wasn't there. That. No, I'm just manipulating what was there. Now you do the same thing with your belief in gravity, isolate gravity and prove it's true. Yeah. Things only fall down. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Well, I'm asking you why things don't serious. fall up. All you're doing is citing, oh, a bumblebee does something. These are all teeny tiny objects where electrostatics can overwhelm the effect of gravity. Why doesn't a rock fall up or a person or a car or anything ever? Let me ask this. Because the, pre the pressure mediated by the density relationship and the way makes it go down. It's pretty simple. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you both Those sure were words. Okay. So, dude, that's uh, pretty bad look. Well, hold yes, on. It is a bad look for you. All right. Hold on, gentlemen. I, the what I want to say is that you you both have been extremely well behaved and entertaining, and I want to let the viewers, of which there are many thousands, get in if for a few minutes. But do I do I dare bring up Cavendish? Do I dare bring up because that is a point of contention, right? Of that matter attracts matter, right? That disproves. Mm -hmm uh gravity right like i'm yeah. a very large fat man very attractive young uh but not young why did i say young that's creepy very attractive thin women are often attracted to me but the um let's actually not go down that let's not let's not go down that road it's probably too complicated i want to let people yeah because everything's electrostatic it's way stronger than gravity's claimed to be yeah, yeah but I'll, they shield for electricity. If you have a lot of questions like that, it's like, you know, we can have a conversation in the future, man, whether it's, yeah, it's yeah. streamed or not. It's maybe, down the, it's maybe down the rabbit hole too far. Um, but I just want to, like, this is the only ahead. thing that I really want to know, Dave, before we move on, bro. Like, All right, go ahead. You go ahead. said you didn't think the numbers were correct, whatever, you dismissed it. Then you said maybe there's some type of atmospheric effect. Do you agree, though, that refraction is the bending of light, which means that a silhouette can't be refracted because it is the absence of light. What? Can a silhouette be refracted? You're, if you're seeing something, there's light traveling to your eyes. So sure, but, so but the, mountains, be there. the mountains should be below the curve of the earth, right? But we're seeing the silhouette once it gets backlit, which means you need a line of sight to the physical object blocking the light. I don't know, man. You're, yeah, so we you're, you're doing. Point. Oh, I see. I saw a thing. Therefore, everything we know about physics and science in general is wrong. It's just not going to fly. I'm Dave, sorry, concedes, Dave concedes defeat. You heard it here first. Okay, great. The Earth is flat. Everybody knows now. Dave concedes. It's so easy to go against flat Earth or just dismiss all the the uncomfortable evidence no, and ask about. It's not uncomfortable evidence. You just make up bullshit. Like like just ask about random things that we were taught when we were five. Like, well, then how does this work? And like. Whatever. I mean, I ask very simple works. things <laughs> like why why does the why does the night sky rotate in opposite directions in opposite hemispheres? You have yet to answer that. Definite. You have answered yet it to directly. <laughs> no, okay, go ahead. Repeat you that. If you look a answer. different I, I way, did. it'll rotate a different way. That's no, just I said first of all, it's level. you have to verify coronal direction. Which when we go to the south, we actually use immense magnetic declination corrections, which could be <laughs> skewing where you think I'm you're saying, viewing. That's just a celestial pole. Just dive back. Looking at the celestial pole with your eyeball. Let him finish. Uh, just a fact. Yeah, but and he's, then, just, um, he's galloping. It's just word salad. He's just saying words to deflect. Dude, um, dude, stop using the experience. term word salad. You don't what? know what it means. It means you're just saying words that aren't saying anything, which is what you're doing. That's what it means, and that's what you do. Right? But you can never give specific examples of when I did it. Just now, what you just did. I'm asking. I said looking that at the magnetic spirit. declination what does that have in to do the with south. It? What? What does it have to do with what I'm asking you? 
you have to determine your cardinal direction. And then the second part is because no, magnetic declination, magnetic declination corrections are immense in the south. You're confused that about makes what it I'm very asking difficult you. to verify cardinal direction. Directions thing. I'm asking about rotating clock counterclockwise oh. versus clockwise. You have yet to answer that. He's going you, okay. You back. need to determine. Yeah, so just so the viewers know, hold on. You guys are both being really great, by the way. Like you're being very respectful, and I appreciate that. Dave, I believe, is going back to his literal. The first thing, I said. the very first thing you said. Yeah, the globe. This is, is all recorded. I tried to answer it the first time he asked it. No, you dropped well, it seven recorded. times. You I've answered it three times. If I look in a different direction, it'll magically spin the other way. That's, That's not, not how no, things work. No, if you put I a clock on the ceiling, specific. it's gonna go clockwise no matter which way you face. Sorry, buddy. I said that we see th this does require usually some visualizations to understand it. We see in a little dome. It's called an azimuthal grid. You can go to Stellarium. That's how we map the stars. We have a zenith position, an azimuth position, and we measure elevation angles. When you do that 360, it gives you a dome. That's how we view the sky. NASA themselves have articles talking about how we see the sky to be a dome. We have an equidistant limit of vision. It's like a little dome. If you were to replicate that with a bunch of spinning stars and you look out towards the edge of this dome it's going to make them look like they're converging and spinning around the central point even though they're literally not doing that we have replicated it therefore the we would the expect we would expect to see it just like crepuscular and anti-crepuscular rays when the sun's setting in the west it'll look like it's in the east at the same time and the rays will converge to a point even though it's just based on perspective okay. that is an a, objectively a viable answer for the star trust not a viable answer you're just saying words like crepuscular and perspective to appease flat earthers who have no idea what you're talking about because you cannot answer how things rotate counterclockwise in, in one hemisphere and clockwise in the other you know what anti-crepuscular rays are explained perfectly by this model it turns Do you know what anti-crepuscular rays are well, what? tell me what they are. Go ahead. So you called it word salad, but it's just that you don't understand the terms. It doesn't okay, matter, so but you're just taking, a, it's a jumble of words. It's not that each word doesn't mean something. It's not just literal gibberish and syllables. You're taking words that are words and putting them together to make a salad, like your lettuce and your croutons and your things like that. That's why I tell you of yum, yum word salad. You cannot explain what is, can you concede that this makes perfect sense visually, intuitively, just spatially, can you at least concede that this makes more did. sense than what you're saying? No, no, no. I mean, I will say that if the, it is exactly south, yeah, of course, that's what the globe predicts. But we so made the globe model. So you're admitting that the globe Earth explanation for the way we see stars moving in the sky makes more sense no. than everything you just said using random buzzwords that you. No, I didn't say that. But it, it this well, is this is the point I want to make here too. Know. Look, Dave had to deny that the default position is that the earth's a stationary plane it's not the deep that is a position. fact no, that is literally a fact. fact so that's just a thing you say wait 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 whenever we fly a plane do we treat the earth like it's flat it doesn't matter we're just flying oh. it, 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 we're not talking about the shape well, of okay, the hold earth on. we're just hold traveling on. if, if, so it's if, a default if that's position. true hold on Austin. if that's true as as the debunkers post out uh point out when you fly on the southern hemisphere, or why why do planes take direct routes as opposed to following the flat Earth map? Because it takes the same time to fly from Australia. I think that what is the example you used, Dave? Sydney to Santiago Sydney over the Pacific Santiago. Ocean. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this one because we didn't what get the, to it. What, yeah, it's yeah. always yeah. obfuscation away from the point that the actual the physical question. flying of the plane we're requires getting, a flat stationary. So he asked the question. I'm just going with him. I'm, I'm not. Asking. I just think it's funny. I think it's, I just think it's funny. <laughs> All right. Okay, right, but well, yeah, I know all the debunks. They're not debunks. Are with me sitting in this chair right now? They so, are. You can't explain. No, that okay, flight. I'll just you go ahead and explain it. So, if you if you say you fly from Sydney to San Diego, one direction actually takes significantly longer than the other return flight. How much? Then it doesn't. It doesn't. It it it, 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 it objectively does. Have headwinds back way. It's like thirty minutes. That's all. no. There are flights that are up to three hour difference. So you yep. so okay that's a How fact. I look it up? Now, if you everyone can verify everything I'm saying, and you yeah, can go to 24 hour flight radar and look matter. at the data. You can go to 24 hour flight radar, look at the data. What you'll see is it says the plane's going say 550 miles per hour, right? On the globe, obviously you just have a similar distance both ways, but if the time is different, they're obviously not going the same speed. So what that proves, right? Because speed equals distance over time. So what that proves is that the data we're being given about how fast that plane goes is wrong. You can Google plane goes 800 miles per hour and there will be articles talking about planes catching jet streams. You're going to need wait, like wait, wait, 2,000 wait. miles an hour. Okay, but planes can't... No, you don't. 
Sure That's ridiculous. You have, you, know, you guys that see, distance is like triple or quadruple the distance that makes sense for the amount of time it takes. So are no. you going to pretend that there's some inc that crazy wind or personal tornado that makes it fly quadruple the speed to get it over oh, the there? Hurricane and also, why doesn't it go the route that makes sense on the flat Earth? Why does well, it me, go that okay, for, first, if you assume the Earth's a globe with a projection, that doesn't prove the Earth's a globe, and it doesn't. So you're you're Earth's asking time. me, are the, the pilots in on it? No, the pilots aren't in on it. I know tons of flat earth pilots. They weren't, they there thought the earth was a no globe. Most of their flat earth pilots. That's a lie. Well, see, okay, this is what I'm saying. On, you have to lie about stuff like that. You're dude. The one lying. So There's no flat earth pilots. Ask any pilot if, if the earth is flat, they'll laugh in your face. I my know. Life. They all I'm take multiple. great circle routes. They take great circle routes I, that are. That are can a circle exist earth? on a flat earth? My wife is a pilot. Uh, no, a, a great wife, circle. Does anybody want to talk to me? My wife's a pilot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. What does she think? Bring her in. <laughs> she Dude, I just had a, I had a, I have an Air Force pilot that reached out to me I of saw, 30 saw, years. Yeah. That's a yeah. fact. Um, cool. The, that, that's true. Totally. I don't want to. See, I was saying you have to deny like basic that. reality. Why? Um, why is it so crazy to think that you could be making that up on the spot? But what is what I'm saying? How, oh, hold on a second. Either, I, either I let these guys go at it for 10 more minutes, or we answer uh, viewer questions. I feel like we've gone. Good time. I feel like Let's we're there, it. right? Yeah. yeah, we're there. So I, I want to pick a few of these. I'll stick around live for a few minutes after I let these guys go. I, I want to just like give a digital. I mean, I don't care what side you're on. Um, you know, thank you both for being here and for being so passionate and so being so engaged and you know, and being uh just great. Um, and uh, you know, obviously people people are gonna think you know, whatever they want to think, but I hope people are entertained. There are many, many 10, well, not many, many tens of thousands, but well, there's over, I don't know, 15,000 people watching. So a lot of people are entertained on a Saturday night and they could have been watching some garbage. So, um, this is obviously much better. Uh, I, I'm trying to, I'll try, I will read them all after I let these gentlemen get on with their Saturday nights, but I wanted to pick some that I thought can we do can we do like a like a, a six second closing or something at some point? Absolutely. I'll do a two minute and then because well you guys uh should we coin flip for who goes last? It's like a criminal trial, right? So generally the prosecution goes last. Um but I'll just say I, I'm indifferent. Okay. Well then we'll let Dave go first. Um Someone says, make Dave define one thing in detail that Austin has said is word cell. Well, he did that. I think he did do that. Um, no, it's, it's not that he's using words that aren't real. It's that he's stringing together words in a way that isn't saying anything. It's just Give an example. Scientific terminology. I can't Give remember if he didn't say anything, so it doesn't really stick. Oh, yeah. Right? The when definition of word salad is incoherent rambling, yeah. typically associated with schizophrenia. So if I was saying, yo, chicken, yesterday, sunset, that okay, whatever, dude. The fact you didn't understand the terms like anti-crepuscular rays and anisotropic and magnetic declination doesn't make it word salad. I mean, you I need know. to go inform yourself what the words mean. I'm saying that those words don't pertain to any kind of explanation for what I was talking about. Magnetic declination isn't going to explain away looking at an object in the sky, seeing that it rotates a particular direction, going to the other hemisphere and seeing that it rotates in the other direction. Now you're, you're, okay, you're trying to rebut my argument. You're trying to rebut my argument, but that doesn't you need to do that. Don't words. just dismiss the argument as word salad. It's the it's basically vocalizing inept vocabulary skills and bragging about it. It's no, super weird. It's acknowledge. It's pointing out that you use a bunch of terminology, rapid fire, to make it sound like you know what you're talking about to trick people into thinking that you know what you're talking about. Somebody That's said. Word somebody salad. said this. I have a challenge for both Dave and Austin. Mm -hmm. Using your preferred method model the earth universe derived to the 9.8 meters per second per second it's indisu indisputable that falling objects accelerate towards the ground at that acceleration gravity is true i i uh, i'm a physics guy so so i think i, I don't want to like every question somebody asked i don't want to like devolve into like a 20 minute but i think dave would say gravity and 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 wits it would say density right like <laughs> Yeah, but the nine meters per course. second per second is consistent. It doesn't but matter the, if it's a bowling ball. Well, yeah, it's, it's derived from Newton's law of universal gravitation, and you need the mass of the Earth in there. If gravity was electromagnetism, the mass of the Earth wouldn't be a factor. And okay, it, okay. Well, you can get it from electrostatics. If you look at Gauss's law, there's only that's very it's a very similar relationship. But what's funny is it actually doesn't always fall at nine point eight meters per second squared. That is an agreed upon average. It's close to vacuum. that. It's that's close to vacuum. that. 
No, in a vacuum, it changes. There's something called gravimeter, no. gravimeter measurements, which is a vacuum sealed chamber with interferometry measuring a BB fall, and it'll fluctuate above 9.81. Right oh, now, it's course. decimal points, but the point is okay. that it fluctuates at specific times when the electric field changes, even inside of a vacuum sealed chamber. So yeah, to claim it doesn't have anything to do with electric field is insane. Prove that it's space-time right. bending and warping, or we're winning because we can physically prove it's electric. So you? until you can prove another claim, you don't have the upper upper edge at all it's well, actually the other way okay, around you on, because you let, can Dave reply let Dave reply you yeah. cannot do anything with electromagnetism to demonstrate this you cannot take uh objects of differing properties paramagnetic diamagnetic ferromagnetic why does it not matter at all what the composition of an object is it all falls 9.81 meters per second squared not as the average right i know it, it varies depending on altitude and radius of the earth where you are locally but you cannot demonstrate any discrepancy take any object a bar magnet a uh, iron ferromagnetic iron anything show me that it does anything different than what anything else does that's neutral wouldn't it interact with the field in a different way actually it's a drop drop tower test that was done in europe at uh, i believe a university and they show different elements falling at different rates and so this is the truth though that the electric field that creates a downward electric current of 10 micro microamps per meter so it's very small and it's very nearly constant so we don't expect the downward pressure to change much that's a real verifiable part of physics i can go out and measure it and manipulate it and make things float can you prove that space time is bending and warping no, of course not to what you, you said. can just assume no you absolutely can relativity is very well corroborated but you no, have not. you have absolutely zero ability right uh, 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 opposite charges accelerate in opposite directions in an electric field right so why again does nothing fall up okay because when the object is more dense density is the compactness of matter so what holds the matter together it's electrostatic charges that gives it a compactness literally all molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic in nature and if you call that word salad that's Let's insane because that's just Let's a direct quote here. no it is word salad because you're not answering the question you're it's a direct just using quote from purdue judgment. university you're dude Purdue? What? I just quoted Purdue verbatim. So this is the problem with listening yes. to people like this guy. They're just going to dismiss it as word salad. You can't have an intellectually honest conversation. You're just the point is that it's just random. It's just random words. You just said density. I'm right, asking bro. you why nothing falls up, and you answered density. Air is less air dense is here. Air is less, air dense, air less air. dense here. In fact, this air is less dense than this air because it gets it becomes so? less dense with elevation. Why does it fall down? Why does it's still less fall dense down? in the why object in all in scenarios, Dave? Do you not? know that even in a vacuum it's still more dense than the environment or the medium right it doesn't right. matter if it's a little bit less and dense in a vacuum, the object's still more dense. down because the mass of the earth is below it so why doesn't anything accelerate upwards why doesn't anything fly to the other gaussian surface why isn't anything repelled by the earth because there's a downward electric current electromagnetism there's why a downward electric flip the current why what about a lightning strike because you can't manipulate the entire polarity. earth when the right? lightning strikes does something there suddenly fly up to the cloud there's a reversal polarity there. Why okay. is it that you can't get anything to fall up? Okay, you cannot flip the entire electric field of the Earth. Now, Not for it to be analogous to right there, right under the lightning bolt, something can fly up. No? All right, here's what I'm going to do. I know that it's late. I'm going to give you both, first of all, a huge round of applause. Please, everyone in chat who's currently, the chat is just as hinged as I thought it would be. Uh, Wait, hinged everyone, or unhinged? I mean, I unhinged. Yeah. Unhinged. Yeah, I would have said. But uh, I really, really appreciate both of you being on. This is incredible, super entertaining. Everyone in chat, I don't care who you agree with or disagree with. Please give, you know, check out, you know, check out these uh, individuals, particular YouTube channels. I, I assume both of them will use this footage and, and ha make more content. Watch that. Um, and uh, I want to give you guys both, what do you think, three minutes to go out on? I mean, I need like 30 seconds. I don't need it. <laughs> okay. All right. Two minutes to go out on. Go out on. Um, and since uh, I think Dave, you went first uh, leading in, we'll let Austin go first leading out. But I want you both guys to know I'll have you back on any time you want. This was a blast for me. Like, uh, I know that chat, I know they enjoyed it. Obviously, both of you hope to educate people. But for me, I'm a loser entertainer and I know everyone was entertained. So if everyone had a good, good time, please support whoever side you want. And I will read everybody's chats after I let these guys off the hook because they've got more important shit to do. Um, so Austin, 
Uh, I will give you the floor. I will shut off my camera and give you two uninterrupted minutes. Plug whatever you want. Let people know where to find you. Uh, watch your content. And then we'll go to Dave. And then I will stay on and, and respond to all the other stuff. If, if that's okay with you guys. Does that sound okay? Yep, sure. Okay. Go ahead. I'll actually, I'll actually time it. So um, the default position is that the Earth's stationary planets, what we all experience. Could, in theory, the Earth be a spinning globe? Sure. Whenever you point at the sky and say, look, it matches the globe, it's very ignorant because we made the globe model from the sky. We took observations and reverse engineered the way that we see the sky and assume the Earth's a sphere. Of course it matches. That's how we made it. And it didn't match for hundreds of years. It had to constantly be updated, still being updated. Relativity is the most verified theory ever. Isn't true at all. 1933, Fritz Zwicky saw the galaxy cluster only had 1% of the mass it needed to actually keep the galaxies from escaping that means it was missing 99% mass that's called dark matter it was originally called missing mass it's still a major problem relativity can't even predict things on the quantum local or cosmological scale it's been falsified with things such as uh, anisotropic light propagation meaning light's actually in a variant it changes etc so a lot of these things are a bit more complex I encourage people to go like actually look at my channel or ether cosmology and listen to us break down Einstein's papers and you can hear him say it look at the tests that falsify this stuff but this is this is the part that's very important falsifications independent of replacement we were all told that the earth is a spinning globe it's very easy to mock and ridicule people that are much more uh, informed and diligently research and actually go out and do tests in real life then actually look into it for yourself. I get it. But just calling them names, appealing to consensus, or whatever, doesn't matter. This is a crazy conversation. And actually what we have proven for step one is that the earth is stationary. And that's been done with interferometry. And so even Einstein admitted that if the interferometry measurements were correct, that his entire theory is wrong and the earth is stationary, effectively being the implication, we have verified that the interferometry changes with altitude, periodicity, et cetera. Long story short, it has been proven that the earth is stationary. It is, is therefore in the center of the universe, all observations ever showed that the globe claims everything is actually an illusion. It just looks like the earth's in the center. It looks like the earth is flat, but it's really not. Everything is just an illusion. So I encourage you to inform yourself about it because, you know, it, it you can't really be confident in your position until you actually know what your position is. And the vast majority of people don't even understand uh, the globe model. So they actually don't know what they believe. in. so that's really the only reason I do this is to uh, encourage people to at least inform themselves about what they believe before they're so confident in it. Thanks, Austin. Thanks so much, dude. Uh, Dave, lead us out. I'll, I'll stay on live after Dave's uh, final here. But uh, yeah, thank you both for coming on. Cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, no, he's absolutely wrong. The default position is that the Earth is a sphere. And as predicted, he uh, chose to obfuscate by going to relativity and Einstein and all these things, which are not helpful. Since antiquity, we've known that the Earth is a sphere. All observations demand that the Earth is a sphere. He was absolutely incapable of answering this. He just did a thing about, oh, if you look in a different direction, it's going to spin the other way. Doesn't make any sense. Was totally unable to explain this. Uh, Utilize magnetic declination. Again, this is, these positions are nowhere near the uh, magnetic pole. And so the idea that they could just suddenly all be looking in the same direction because magnetic declination. I'm sorry, David Weiss. I'm sorry, Austin. This is not sufficient explanation. Day and night regions of illumination all we got was a little toddler, uh, you know, shine a light on a thing where the there's supposed to be a dome, even though there's not actually any dome and the sun's going to be outside or is it going to be inside? Doesn't make any sense either. Um, South Pole, we'll come back to that again, day and night. Uh, Southern Hemisphere, we did not get to uh, any adequate explanation of how this route is possible. He just said, oh, they go really fast. I don't remember what he said, some wind or something. And uh, we definitely have absolutely no explanation for this uh, Antarctica Cup ocean race. These boats are not going all the way the entire world, turning the opposite direction of where they are actually turning. So uh, I think that was pretty fun. I think we managed to stay away for the most part from the uh, esoteric uh, aspects of modern physics that uh, that uh, Austin likes to spew his word salads about. And we stuck for the most part to things like gravity and things falling. So it was uh, somewhat productive, productive, but I do uh, look forward to Austin going to uh, the South Pole. Hell yeah. The, I'll go uh, with you, bud. Seeing I'm the 24 hour sun. And then uh, I can't wait to see his video saying, I now believe it's a sphere. And then we can be rid of this idiotic flat earth disease uh, forever, hopefully. Maybe well, in a thousand years, it'll come back somehow. I don't know. Gentlemen, you both killed it. You're both incredibly entertaining and very respectful and well prepared. And I want to thank you for coming on. And I want to remind everyone in chat. 
please do, you know, I don't care whose quote unquote side you picked, check out both of their channels. Both are linked in the description. I think it's good to take in both sides of whatever conversation is going on. Fellas, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I will wrap it up with chat here too and uh, follow and uh, let them know what's going on. You obviously can reach out to me anytime. Use this content how you see fit and um, have a have an incredible weekend, both of you, please. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for hosting it, man. Much love. Oh, yeah. It was a blast. Thank you. Okay, it's me. I'll be right back. We're going to give me like uh, 60 seconds and we're going to go over a recap. Okay, here we go. Hi, ho. You know what's wild? You know what's wild? I did, yeah, I did. I definitely peed in my basement. Uh, you know what's wild? You know, I, I wanted to go through, I wanted to go through unsubscribing. Why, Geocentric? Uh, I felt like I was as, I felt like I was as fair as humanly possible. Now I do think that flat earth faced more criticism, you know, I, I agree with that, but it's also like the, you know, He's challenging the genuinely, generally accepted stuff. This was cringe. I appreciate you doing something different on Saturday, but I don't think you're capable of moderating this type of debate. Austin did use made up terms. I, you know, lol, not a cat. I know you're a daily viewer or whatever, but I just, I hard fucking disagree with you. I hard disagree. There's 10,000 people watching right now. I think people were, in general, entertained. And that's what my job is. My job is not to be injecting myself and, you know, arguing with people. My job is to provide entertainment to people. Uh, and the idea that if I was going to host a debate and interrupt people every five seconds when I thought they were lying or when I thought that would trust me, trust me when I say, if I was doing that, everyone would be bitching about it. You know what I mean? Everyone would be like, dude, shut up. You're interrupting too much. And, you know, based on the fact that the flat earth side was kind of, you know, kind of you know, flat earth side, you know, I, I feel like that's who's criticizing me the hardest, but like, I can't show favoritism. I felt like I was extremely fair. I have moderators have to moderate. Hosting is not the same as moderation. That's fair, but I was just hosting. I wasn't moderating it. Never called myself a moderator, just hosting it. That's all they asked me to do. People only asked me to host it, host, not moderate. I could never host a flat earth debate. I'm not impartial. You know what I mean? All right, here's a new poll. Who won? Flat earth or sphere?
Uh, you just called Dave respectful. You lost all credibility. The earth is round, but that dude needs his ass whipped. No, I thought he was fine. I mean, he was a little, a little, you know, he was a little angry here and there, but I thought he was fine. You know? Uh, Jeremy, this is cringe. Oh, I got that. Yeah, I don't agree with you. Lol, not a cat. I know you're a longtime viewer, and I know you meant that respectfully. Well, the Reese says, flat earthers are just projecting the shape of their own brain out of the globe. This is information. Dumb, gish gallop stuff really isn't conductive and productive to debate. This should be uh, point by point, back and forth. That's how Vosh quote debates. Witsit's arguments keep falling flat, LOL. Uh, Dark Llama Boy says, why don't they film with a satellite the Earth from space and prove it's flat? Well, I mean, they do film the Earth all the time from satellites, but I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Lord of the Reef says, this is like Destiny arguing with a slightly more retarded Destiny. Derek Lamboy, which country is the closest to the edge of the Earth? Well, Antarctica, right? Uh, Sater says, this Dave guy don't want to have an opposing viewpoint. In the real debate, he would have been called it already. Um, people interrupt this much, fear opposing point. Okay, maybe. Um, Tim Quadracci says, I feel like the Earth truly was flat. Lizzo would have folded by now. <laughs> That's a fair point that we could all probably agree on. Uh, before the Renaissance, all creatures had a flat Earth model, culture, sorry, and study of the stars. <clears throat> That's true. King of Biltong says, good afternoon from Anton's Meat and Eat. Free shipping from for your Biltong using code quartering on landedbiltong.com and antonusa.com. Biltong is perfect for your carnivore, keto, and high-protein diets. Cookie Don says, I believe in global Earth, but I think flat Earth needs censorship. It if it is, I don't think it does. Sorry. I don't see harm. Yeah, I don't. I think believing in a flat earth is harmless. I agree with that. Dirk Lam says, what is a woman? Omnistone says, how can you have a full moon at the center of the sky if the earth plane would be in the way of the sun? Yeah, that does. That generally is a problem for flat earth. Pepe Payne says, if two people are on opposite sides of a window and a third person draws a circle on the window, it will be clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on which side of the window you're on. Correct. Yep, Pepe. And Seder, this is the Dave. You won't let a person answer, which lets me tell you. I mean, Dave was pretty aggressive. I agree with that. But, um, you know, I was not convinced by the flat earth debate, earth side. But I'll tell you what, the poll currently sits at with 1,000 votes, 61% of people have been converted to the flat earth. 61% of people on the YouTube poll have been converted to flat earth. When it was like 65, 35 in favor of severe earth earlier. So, I mean, did flat earth win? Um... I think I'm ca I'm just catching up. I want to give everyone because if people super chatted that matters to me, I read them. I'm not Tim Pool. Uh okay, on YouTube, some of the comments. Mandela effect says there's there's more than zero scientific I'm sorry. There's more than zero scientific equipment proving flat earth. Gyroscope sextant need two straight lines for an angle, microwaves and sonar for whales thousands of miles. Three sword hearts says, I think Dave really fumbled the debate with his bad attitude instead of presenting facts. I wanted to win, but he didn't because he was petty. Uh, the Lord judge says, Jeremy, you couldn't have done much better. Flat earthers are utterly relentless in their obstinance. Jaeger Coghart says, I'm back. But Tessa not go well. How to fix tree damage to a car. Fritz says, I had a seize for the guest. I want to be refunded. I don't know what that means. Joshua Phillips says, love the debate content. Post more debates, please. I don't know. I don't know. People seem like it didn't do a good job. People were pretty critical. You need a scientist in place of Dave. Uh, Crypto Rose says, what's it got in the gene pool whilst the lifeguard wasn't looking? Starvin Marvin says, pebbles sink, boats float, prove its density. Sheepduck says, the evaporation falls up. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't really fall, though, but yeah. Run Boston Bear says, I talked to the same pilot. He's telling the truth. Check my K2 coverage. Rich says, Dave exclaims word salad. You can't define the term. If you don't understand the terms, Dave, then why are you claiming foul play? John, no name, says, explain Venus orbit 
and lightning and how it works on Earth centric model or retrograding of Mars in the sky. It'll stand by for 90%. Won't even know why this proves the sun is center. Squeaky Eye says, What's it? Why is there accurate data from the sun? We can see it rotate, we can calculate solar wind speeds and arrival times. Yeah, I still I wanted to kind of stay away from that, you know? Um, just because I felt like uh it was just gonna end up being like a, you know, I didn't want him to feel like he was on trial. Uh by the way, my wife is a pilot and does not believe the earth is flat. But I didn't want to again, I didn't want to, I didn't want to like be in part, uh, I didn't want to be biased. Um Give an example of your highest math education. Ben uh, Nowakowski says, question for both Dave and Austin. Oh, I hit that one. RT16 says, do you both at least agree that Nathan Thompson is being an idiot? Run Boston Bear says, thank you, Quartering, for hosting. This is a great debate. I look forward to the breakdown. Bruce that Mindshock is going to do. Trim Paloxalop or whatever. Dave and Anti-Flat Earthers always have an interrupt. You have to interrupt. You guys can't help yourselves. Ah, uh, true. Question and answers. Word salad. A phrase Dave uses when he doesn't understand what's being said. The Lore Lodge says, "Ask him about the eclipses. He'll say he doesn't matter." Uh, Maximine says, "The globe is dead." Ajax says, "Witsit is intellectually disabled by a love listening to him." Bieri Soy Toro says, "Earth is measured flat." Period. Sheepdog says, "A dome vision is why planetarium looks like the sky outside. Flat room dome wall." Standard. Did you guys have fun though? I feel like you all had fun. I feel like everyone had fun, right? And uh, by the way, I normally stream on this channel Monday through Friday at 5.30 Eastern. Monday through Friday at 5.30 Eastern. So if you're watching on the quartering, you know, the main channel, which I think has the most viewers right now, of 4,000 of you, go subscribe to Quartercast. That's my... That's actually my, I normally don't live stream to quartering. I normally live stream to quarter cast, uh, which is my actual live stream channel. So if you're on the quartering, go subscribe right now to quarter cast Monday through Friday, Melanie Mac, Sticks, X and Hammer, and much more. Not fun at all. Won't be back. Int Bell, really? That's unfortunate. I find it hard to believe you weren't entertained at least a little bit. Um, a, uh, Run Boston Bear. I got that one. Fritz says, what's it? Do you teach your children that the earth is flat? No, says, why do flat earthers often resort to insults? I thought the flat earthing guy was more polite, to be honest with you. Um, Bieri Soy Toro says, not a real Professor Dave. Must be one of those guys who gets off on humiliation. Fritz says, wits it lies. Nothing I did refuted relativity. Sheepdog says, make Dave define one thing in detail that Austin has said in that quote word salad. Dave is a horrible baby. The Gorn captain says, which shit do you tell your all oh, kids are earth if I get that? Run, boss, and bear. The truth is powerful and worth pursuing. The globe story is not the truth, and it's an inversion. Ben also says, I have a challenge for both. I got that one. Uh, Thrash. Thrashless Smith says, Dave is a grifter making money. Dude's a narcissist. I mean, he didn't make any money today. Dom says, D, please remind me of your best exclusive proof. Earthly skeptic. I got that one. Um, yeah, this has been fun. The Lore Lodge says, how do eclipses work? Zach, Zato, Zato Chris Kane Sword says, instead of keeping doors from falling off a jet, airplanes, these two dorks over here having a slap fight. On Rumble, uh, poor Trazen says, what blew me away is no coffee brand coffee mentioned. McLeod says, no one is stepping, stopping the flat earthers from showing the ice wall on a live stream, especially with Starlink in a medium-sized sailboat. Uh, those who doubt them can follow the live stream too. Yeah, I agree with that. Matt says, flat earthers love to say satellites are fake, but happily use GPS. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a cell phone. Wayne says, Dave Alley's full of debate tactics. Okay, okay. Melanie Mack. Oh, Melanie, you're still here. I saw your super chat. I missed it. Everyone go subscribe to my co-host, Melanie Mack. Uh, if you are, if you're not like, if you haven't already, uh, she's a flat earther. 
uh, and she's over on Rumble, 9.61 thousand followers, and she's on YouTube with like almost 200,000. You know? I'm not a flat earther, but I don't make money off it. Wait, I'm not a flat earther, but I don't make money off it. I'm white, but I have no privilege. LOL. Melanie, I can't believe you watched. I thought you would be, isn't Saturday night the night you make, you take all those foot photos that you sell? Uh, Star Trails instantly disproved the flat earth. The dome is supposed to be circling us. If you're away from the North Pole, you're looking at an angle, and circles at an angle are not eclipses, not seen. That's from Draco Pole. Uh, Run Boston Bear says, Austin is not making things up. He's providing answers to those curious about it. Yeah, I, I thought it was, you know, in general, pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. Uh, Monday through Friday, I'm live at 5.30 Eastern. You, you, All of you better show up on Monday because, you know, we got a nice big crowd tonight. I don't know if um, you're you're used to this on Rumble. Normally on my Rumble channel, I'm not hosting debates. Um, but that was fun. That was definitely fun for me. I had a lot of fun with that. And um, pretty big stream. I think we were close to 4,000 people. Hey, if you're on Rumble right now and it's your first time tuning in, say hi in chat. And make sure you follow the channel because I'll be live again on Monday at 5.30 Eastern. Joshua Phillips says, host a meat eaters versus vegans debate. I'd do that. Camera shaking real vigorously. Sorry, my foot's on the desk. Uh, Trim says, I used to sub. You did a fair job, Jeremy. Would happily Would be happy for you to host another. Okay, thanks. Uh, Dave, a good job making Austin explain, but should have pushed Dave for actual evidence. Asking Austin questions about Flat Earth before this might have worked better. That's fair. Uh, Skillet Gaming says, Globe Defenders are primarily hardcore leftists. Is that true? Melanie Mack, y'all especially show up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, you should. Melanie Mack brings the guys, you know. I know all you dickwads save your Rumble Rant money for her thursday night show but I'm, I'm glad you tuned in anyway joe pike says remember the definition of science transitioning hypothesis to theory by repeatable experiments are consistently validated by wider scientific community just so we're clear you guys all know where i stand right i i don't believe in a flat earth and i was not convinced that a flat earth exists after today's debate but i'm still open you know i'm still open to be convinced I will go to the South Pole happily. Um, I don't think that the flat earth is a grift because I don't think that you can make a lot of money talking about it. I think that Austin is correct saying that if you're talking about flat earth, you're not getting promoted by YouTube. You know what I mean? Like, I'd agree with that. You restore my faith, Courtney. What's your name? My real name is Jeremy. Swampy's edging his way to the next show. Good for you, bud. Yeah, so make sure wherever you're watching, you follow the channel. If you're watching on the quartering, my main channel, make sure you follow quarter cast. Jeremy will scale the ice wall. Yes, you're damn right I will, Bam Bam Bigelow. I will scale the ice wall no matter what. Okay? By the way, the final votes, wildly, Flat Earth, Flat Earth won. Flat with 1700 votes, flat earth is ahead 5646. Here it is says, not all cultures thought the earth was flat. Ancient Greeks knew the earth was round uh, because of Pythagoras. Aristotle and Aristophanes made it clear just post up the flash shot experiment that flash earth, oh, just post a flash shot experiment that flat earthers eat up. Yeah, I was not, I really wasn't like that impressed by the flashlight thing that didn't really blow my skirt up you know what i mean it didn't really it didn't really i'm gonna tweet that out right now i'm gonna just what should i say should i use a swear word i'm just gonna say i will scale the ice wall all right that's how i'm gonna tweet By the way, Melanie, uh, starting next week, uh, standing desk only. So I'm going, I'm going full stand. So you're going to look 
Ça, ça me... Well, now I must eat some Din Din. So, uh, Pliskin said the space industry is worth $211 billion. Flat Earthers don't believe in it. Uh, Flat Earth Dave interview says don't believe either of them. Verify everything. Watch the Crash Course videos of Flat Earth Dave. James says no one denies objects in the sky relaying signals. Abundance Everywhere says for those who still have questions, watch Level With Me by Sean Hibbler. See, I'm giving the Flat Earthers their... Hey, Fritz says, refund my super chats that were not presented to guests. Uh, I'm sorry. You seem like the first person in history that has that expectations. Not only that, Fritz, uh, I did read your super chats. You should watch Tim Pool, where he reads like two out of a thousand super chats. And you know what? If you're that mad about it, email me and I will happily refund your super chats. If the expectation that super chatting me a dollar or two meant I should interrupt the debate in real time to demand an answer to your question, and that's what you thought, then email me and I will refund your money. Every, you know, super chats matter so much and rumble rants, they're literally how I survive. But like, I, I swear to God, or whatever spaghetti monster you worship, there is nobody on the planet that reads more Super Chats than I do. There's certainly not somebody with 10,000 people watching that still reads Super Chats like I do. So, you know, I promise to read as many as I can, but I never guarantee it. Yeah, here it says, no one respects your money as much as Jeremy does. It's true. Yeah, if somebody super chats f fucking $300 or something, I will stop everything and read it. But I still read every super chat regardless of the amount, like a dollar or two dollars. I try to read as everything I can. You know? Someone drops a someone drops a C note, I read that. James Brown, thank you so much. Glober's got curved today. Actually, I mean Flat Earth is currently leading the vote. Lol, not a cat says, Jeremy, read this or refund me. <laughs> no, I'm going to make sure Rumble charges you double. I also read normal chats, which is unusual. Yes, I read, just so everyone knows, when you watch a quartering live stream, and I'm going to go after this because I got to eat, but this is what I'm looking at. Why all of you are like enjoying the show, you know? This is what, this is what I'm looking at. All right. Hold on. I, I want, I'm trying to read every one of your chats everyone this is what my screen looks like here's the live stream on the right and all i care about is what you guys are chatting that's it i read all of your chats all of them i don't only read super chats you can see i don't have super chats highlighted i don't have them sorted i read everybody's chats everybody that's what i'm doing when we're live streaming now I know if I was somebody else out there who who you know there are lots of people that you know only read super chats I will never do that. You know. Why do we see Ryan's belt every thousand years watch watching gay porn while chatting? Good for you McLeod, appreciate you. Uh yeah, I want to know what's on the other side of the ice wall too. I'm thinking it's like, what's that? What's that movie? Um, was it Jim Carrey? Miss my super chat, Cody. I'm sorry. I'm doing. I, I. There were a lot which I'm extremely thankful for. Cody says, Jeremy, can we take a second to appreciate your miss? Uh, Cody says, Jeremy, can we take a second to appreciate your miss sex dungeon joke? Yeah, I thought my sex dungeon joke was a banger and everyone, it just fell flat. So thank you for picking up my sex dungeon joke. Uh, Spring says, research flat earth and how perspective works. Okay. Um, yeah. You haven't read supers yet, have you? I mean, oh, I think quarter cast supers I need to do. Let me do those quick. 
Because I thought I saw Melanie Mack in there. Over on quarter cast, we've got uh, Bear saying, you just called Dave disrespectful. I got that one. Andrew says, there could also be an argument that space doesn't actually exist and that stairs in the heavens are just angels shining their light from the heavens. It's your boy, Dave, says global rhymes with penis. And mass email sounds more like masturbation. Uh, Steve says, can you ask Austin the name of the turtle we're on? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Melanie Macko Boom says twenty dollars for Team Flat Earth. Christ is King, and then Andrew says Flat Earth theory: the sky is a giant dome, and there's a protective barrier around the Earth's edges that redirects you, but you don't feel it. It's an illusion on making you think you're going straight. Uh, yeah, that's correct. And Phil Collins says just film the Earth with a satellite to prove it's flat. All right, everyone. I got to eat some dinner. You all have a sexy night. We will see you on Monday. Please, Monday, 5.30 Eastern. All right? I want you here. I want you to tune in live. Download the Rumble app. Like the video. All right? 5.30 Eastern. Hope you have a sexy Saturday night. 5.30 Eastern. Monday, I'll be live again on quarter cast on YouTube or on rumble. Uh, Melanie will be with me on Tuesday and Thursday. I got to go eat some dinner. I'm hungies. See ya.